What is happening? Oh, not again. What is happening, Internet? Welcome back to Contra Operation. This is the arcade gameplay showing off all the new characters. How's everybody doing today? So yesterday I did a full playthrough. Um, today I'm just showing the characters. And a reminder that a full edited video that I worked really hard on uh, went up that showed you guys the entire cutscenes of the game. Um, every little aspect of the, the game that there was dialogue I cut up and I put into a 30 or 40 minute movie for your convenience to go so you can see the entire story without having to watch uh, the almost three hour live stream. <clears throat> so. Um, yeah, I think that's cool. I don't know what all this stuff is. Retro mix music, Vania mix, Konami mix? I don't know what that is. That sounds interesting. Let's do that. Okay, so these are the characters that you have. Um, you actually get all these characters from playing the story. So as you go through the story, which is a remake of uh, the original Contra and Contra 2, known as Super C. I'm chewing gum, which I don't normally do, but uh, I like it, so... So, Bill and Lance are from the original Contra, and then you have um, Luc Lucia, or Lucia, who is from the PS2 Contra game, the DS Contra game, so Contra 4, Contra Returns, which was a mobile game, and I think she was in one more Contra game. This character, I believe, she's new. So she's made for the game, and Stanley is new. He's based on uh, Probotectors, which were the European versions of Contra, because <clears throat> they deemed the Contra games in Europe in the 80s and 90s as too violent, so they figured, we can't have guys running around getting shot, so we'll turn them into robots, and the Probotectors were born. So we're going to be kicking things off today with the Probotector, Blue, and then I'll go and I'll look at um, the girl... Um, who's usually known as Lucia Zero, but she's just Lucia in this. So, we're going with blue. As you can see, your perks that you bought in story mode, you can incorporate into the actual arcade mode. So that's kind of a cool feature. And um, this game, just so you know, it is Contra, so that means the game is difficult. Like, that's, that's just a given. Contra is a very hard game. I'm playing on normal difficulty, so... I don't know why there's an echo, there just is. I guess we'll just have to deal with it. Also at 11 o'clock tonight, there is a YouTube short called A Way to a Man's Heart. It's a Tifa short. Um, so I will uh, be pushing you guys to watch that short once it releases. So just uh, bear in mind. So we're gonna go with Spreader. And Weapon Retention is a great perk because what it does is when you die, think of it kind of like a, a little cheat, you're able to retain your weapon. Barrier doesn't really work all that well. I don't care about it, but weapon retention is cool. So, all right, let's do it. <clears throat> yes, and I did complete this game last night. I died like 190 times, but I still won. So, put another Contra game under my belt. I actually think that this game is a little bit easier than Contra 4. Contra 4 was really hard. Contra hard. Uh, Ops was hard. Alien Wars was tough. And, um... Oh, what was that other Contra game? I've never played Contra Returns. It's a mobile game. I don't think it exists anymore. Alright, so I put on Konami music. I have no idea what it does. But I think it's going to be various Konami music. So we're the robot right now. I like the blue robot. He's my favorite. Because he's basically Bill. Oh, wow. 
You can also put... They have the original Contra soundtrack in this. Ow. You can stack weapons, as you see here. So I'm totally stacking weapons. They only let you stack weapons twice, though. Um, new to this game is you can actually... I'll show you. Ow. You can overload your weapons, which is new to the Contra franchise. This game is also developed by um, WayForward Technologies. So I believe this is the um, second game that WayForward has made for Konami. <coughs> the first one, first one being Contra 4 on Nintendo DS. And one of the things that WayForward Technologies wanted to do when they made this game was they wanted to make sure that regardless of your age, not necessarily that you could beat a Contra game, but if you played this game in 2024, you would be experiencing what it is to play a Contra game. Because this game is hard. But let me tell you, it felt pretty rewarding when I um, beat it last night. And uh, if this game does really well, I was actually watching the director. Um, Okay, so I, I do have the retro music on. That's kind of cool. I was watching the director of this game. Ow. And he said that if this game does well, they'll do uh, the sequel, which is they'll combine Contra Alien Wars, which is the Super Nintendo game, and they'll do Hard hard Ops, or Hard Cops, or whatever. Which is the Genesis game, I believe. Because this game incorporates elements of um, Contra, the OG Contra game. And it also has Super C. It reimagines, I would say, most of the levels. But it also has some new levels as well. And the emphasis of the story for this game, it takes place before uh, the alien invasion. So, right now you're fighting the Red Falcon army. Ow. Da, 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 da. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, that did not work out well for me. This game also has drop-in and out gameplay. So if you want to play with another person, I believe actually you can play with up to three people. Maybe even four. I don't know. I don't know if they had to drop that. I was watching an interview from six months ago, so I don't know if they kept that stuff in the game or not. But Amber and I showed uh, two-player yesterday. My favorite guns to use in this game is the... Um, Heat-seeking missile, and the spreader gun. Although there is one or two particular levels where you want to use the um, flamethrower. If you do not use the flamethrower, you will not win. Because um, there's some nasty aliens that you can actually literally cook with the flamethrower. And it's the only way. Um, because obviously, you know, mutant nasties have like a... A weakness to um, fire, right? Shoot. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So since all the characters are pretty much interchangeable, it doesn't matter what character you play as. Like, they all have the same power-ups. The girls play a little bit differently, but I'll show you later. For the most part, I'm going to be playing as the robots. I already did um, Bill and... Uh, Lance yesterday. So I'm mostly going to be playing as Red and Blue, uh, Lucia Zero, and um, the new girl. And maybe Stanley. Stanley actually can fly. So if you've played um, Metal Storm, I think that's who Stanley is based on. Um, maybe somebody cor correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Metal Storm is a Konami game. If anybody knows, let me know. That's, that's going way back in the... Uh, the day, though. Metal Storm. If anybody remembers that, you're wicked old. Ow. So, this first level incorporates elements of Super C and Contra. 
And it kind of has that difficulty scaling like they had in uh, Contra 4. And if you guys beat Contra 4, then you were like pretty awesome because Contra 4 is a very hard game on Nintendo DS. I have it. I don't remember if I've beaten it or not. It came pretty close. I made it to the final level. And that's going to clear stage one. Just like that. One diagnostic. Alrighty. Stage one is toast. Alright guys, let's uh, push for those likes. We're about ten minutes in. The robot looks like... Champ? What does that mean? I don't quite understand. Right, stage 11. Stage 2. Hello. Oh, I guess it's bringing me right into this. Okay. No, I'm I'm using Konami music right now, so I don't I don't know what Konami music we're hearing, because I I can barely hear it. You guys can hear it better than I can. If I raise the TV, what's going to happen is you're going to hear an echo. So. Um, the key difference with arcade mode is um, you're not going to get any of the cool story stuff. But again, for you guys' convenience, uh, I made a massive um, story uh, thing that took pretty much all night to edit. Because I had to basically take snippets from whenever the characters were talking. And it was a, a four-hour live stream for me to cut up. You did a great job on that. Thank you. You had a lot of people watching it. Yeah, I don't know why YouTube didn't give it any views. It's crazy. I had all the right tags. I had an awesome thumbnail I spent most of the morning making. Yeah. I mean, they haven't given any of the last 7 billion videos we've done any views. I don't know why you'd be surprised. <coughs> well, the topic videos um, have been getting views. Okay. Over well, a thousand. I mean, I don't know why you're... Pew, 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 pew. Whoa! Now, can you actually change music whenever you want? Options. Uh, no. Oh. I don't even really get a chance to watch your videos because I'm so busy sharing them. I know. I don't have time, and then I have to set up my next thing. I don't even get to watch them. All right, guys. So you actually cannot change whatever music you go into arcade with. You have to listen to the whole time. So if I pick Castlevania music, I'd have to listen to the Castlevania soundtrack the entire time. So we're listening to a Konami remix of popular Konami games, I'm assuming. So we're in arcade mode then? Mm hmm This is arcade. You can only play the robots in arcade mode. You can play additional characters based on where they are in the story, but arcade mode you can play everybody right at the beginning. Well, I mean, if you unlock them. And I... and... I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, and you said that the robots were from the English bird. Not English, the UK. Um, European. Yeah. Yep, because they had UK had very strict uh, laws for violence um, against humans. Mm. Ow. They also had um, pretty strict laws against uh, ninjas. They, oh, ninjas weird. were super violent, so they renamed the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles in the 80s and until the mid 90s. I believe in Europe now they're allowed to be called Ninja Turtles. But for the longest time, they were called Mutant Hero Turtles. I mean, ninjas are basically assassins, so that would make That sense. was their argument. They had very strict uh, censorship. Um, for There were a lot of 80s and 90s uh, cartoons that were renamed and had aspects of them changed. They are also the ones who changed um, one of the Autobots into a different name. Like, the, they had a lot of... A lot of pull. What did you make your short on them? Uh, the short is called A Way to a Man's Heart, and it's Tifa and Cloud talking about what kind of food he likes to eat. Huh. In, I thought it was kind of cute, so I made a short. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow's short is going to be at 11 o'clock, Yuffie singing her song about being bored. Oh my gosh. Yep. 
It's about 30 seconds long. It's perfect for Pew, 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 pew. Now, I don't know if our cave mode has any continues or not. I'm almost dead. Possible. Now, there are other characters you can unlock from um, other Contra games. I was actually... I watched several interviews about this game yesterday, because I was curious. I was like, wow, they teased Alien World for the Super Nintendo Contra game. And this is basically like a new retelling of um, the Contra universe. It starts over again. And WayForward said they're totally interested in um, doing more Contra games, like if this sells well. Like, because, you know, WayForward loves making hard games. If you're into tough games, then WayForward is the company that you want to make your stuff. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. And plus, they grew up with the original Contra games, so that's that's a cool fan base to, to be able to do that kind of stuff. And I died. Go, go, go! Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, Becker, if you need to continue, change your membership to a higher tier, pause, put your membership on pause for whatever, you have to do that through Google. That has nothing to do with us. Yep. So any questions, you have to go to your Google account. And if you have a problem or any kind of questions, you're going to need to, you know, contact Google about that. It has nothing to do with us, so it's... We don't sell the memberships, it's through Google. So you have to take care of that through Google. And if you have a problem or any kind of thing going on, you can talk to them. And we don't handle that. Yeah, I don't know how a game over works. Oops, I guess I messed up. Alright, so Amber and I are going to play now. Do a little two-player action. Dun, 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 dun. I don't like doing the uh, Konami music. I couldn't really hear it very well, so I'm going to do the other stuff. Arcade mode. New Thank York. Uh huh. Any in-game progress will be deleted. That's fine. All right. So staying normal. We're doing contra music. We listen to retro mix, which was meh. Vania mix, meh. Konami mix, meh. I mean, all I've heard is if you need to change your membership in any way, I would hit the join button on our channel, mm. and then it should allow you to either move up a different tier or put your membership on pause or whatever you need to do supposedly you can do it from there but if you have any problems you know like I said you can email Google about that so I showed you guys um, blue robot I'm gonna do red robot this time oh yeah is that what's happening yeah I like being a robot and then you can I can be a robot how do I come in you hit the A button you can be a girl you can be a robot we've showed all of Lance. It's oh. not allowing me. I'm pressing A a thousand times. That's weird. A thousand times yes. Do you want me to be a girl character or... Whoever you want. Or you already were a girl uh, I'm going to be this guy because he can fly. I'm, I'm actually you're trying... You're this robot? To... Yeah, I'm Stanley. Stanley is new to the franchise. I thought you were going to be the red robot. Yeah, I, I forgot that I unlocked Stanley. I want to play Stanley. We haven't played as the girl characters yet. Nope. Are we going to do that on the stream, or no? Yep. I'm showing all the characters. Okay, then I will play as this pink slash red robot. Even though it's red, I'm going to imagine it as pink, because, I don't know. Who made Metal Storm? Who made Metal Storm? Who made this Metal Storm? It's a hard game, right? Who made it? Konami? What system is this on? It's on PlayStation, and it's also on Switch? And I don't know what else it's on. Hi, Chad. Hi, Anthony. Hi, A. Becker. Hi, H.M. Golbeck. Hi, Geo. Hi, Strezzy Live. Hello, um, Jason Jackson. Hello, Max. Teenage Mutant, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles really doesn't roll off the tongue like Ninja Turtles does. Yep, definitely Max. Hi, Captain Zack. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate that, Captain Zack. Hi, Geo the Hero. Hi, Tony Kaname Kuran. Uh, next time that they make Contra sequel, they need to hire via Vert to perform each track. Definitely, Tony. Hi, OH. Hi, Captain Zack. Hi, Chad. Um, Akarui. Hello, Anthony and, um, Jason. Hope you guys are all... Hi, Jim Goldbeck. Hi, Alpha. Hope you guys are doing well. 
I guess I'm gonna be this robot since so we didn't show off the red robot. Okay. Um, this is your perk system, so if you oh my god, you can choose whatever weapon you want, and you can have that weapon at the I start. Like the homing one. Um, if you actually would have uh, selected weapon retention when you die, your weapon would stay. So you can you can pick whatever weapon you want, and then if you hit the weapon retention thing that looks like this, barrier doesn't do anything. Like oh. you you accidentally selected barrier. You want you want something that says. Why would a barrier not do anything? It doesn't do anything. Doesn't matter. It doesn't make any so pick, sense. So pick pick your cool gun, which is you like the missile, right? Well, I guess I can do the spread shot and the homing. Okay, no. Um, I'm just trying to teach you something. Go. What? Okay, pick your gun that you want. Okay, One gun. Okay, homing. Okay. Then yes. now scroll up. Yeah. Take weapon, WP and retention. retention. Yes. So when you die. Um, your weapon will respawn with you, so oh. you, you're not stuck at the basic, um, you know, pea shooter. You can actually have a better weapon. Oh, well, yeah, and we have heard about Star Wars Battlefront tomorrow. It's tomorrow. We, we've heard about that. Mm -hmm. Most likely there will be two streams because Final Fantasy and Ace Attorney most likely are not happening. Um, Final Fantasy is currently at 850 views. It has until 7 in the morning to get 1,000. Um, Ace Attorney is at 700 views, so probably going to be two Star Wars streams tomorrow. All right. Oh, it says yes. You keep the weapons when you die. Awesome. Oh, H. Thank you. It's a handy feature. Uh, Isaiah says I'm back. We're getting food at a company buffet. Awesome, Isaiah. Uh, English robot hype says Chad with a little monocle. We're English robots. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. English robots. I was actually looking to see if Metal Storm is currently licensed by Konami, but I don't know who has the license to Metal Storm. But this character plays similar to that franchise. And there's no dialogue at all in arcade mode. They just kind of hang out. So Stanley's new to the franchise. Probotectors are not. Is, are you Stanley? I am Stanley, the golden robot who can fly. Oh my gosh, you can fly? I can fly. That's not fair. I can't fly very high though, but I can fly. For limited amount of time. I don't know why, but in my feet I was just looking at something when I was upstairs, but... Oh, sorry, I got You're that. Fine. I don't have a double jump though. The um, different tiaras for different uh, princesses of England when they got... They all wear like extremely valuable tiaras when they got married. Mm -hmm. One of their tiaras was like, I think, I think the queen's tiara was like thirteen million dollars or something that she had of diamonds on her head when she got married. Cool. I know. A lot of diamonds. Like Princess Kate's was worth like three or five million or something. Um, a lot. So, um, I don't really duck, like, I mean, I duck. You you actually get low to the ground because you're, like, classic country. I'm, I'm the new guy, so I just, <laughs> I duck. So this was what they had in England, they, yep. in the UK, they had these robots instead of the people. Yep, I think on the Konami collection that they released on Nintendo Switch and years ago, um, Probotector was included in this Did they fight? Did they fight other robots, or did they just fight people? Uh, I believe the robots... I would have to ask Chad, I don't remember. I think the robots shot the normal enemies, but they might have turned all the enemies into robots. I, I don't remember. It's a long time ago. Like, and also, you know, us in the United States, we didn't even know about Probotector, because we had Contra. Like, Probotector was in Europe. Yeah, I mean, my, I mean, I don't know where this idea of Americans being violent came from. Like, my aunt, she spent a lot of time in Germany and in Europe. And when she came back and watched American cartoons here, like Roadrunner, she was like, these are so violent. It's like, it's a Roadrunner! It's not really that violent. She was like, the Roadrunner is getting hit with a mallet. It's like, so? It's a bird. I don't know what kind of stuff they had in the UK, but 
They had I the guess... same cartoons we did. They they had Ghostbusters and He-Man and all that other stuff, but some of the shows had different names. I guess they just think of us as more violent than them, I don't know. Sad <laughs> yeah, yeah, they even here. <laughs> So Chad, uh, my question is, did Probotector um, have um, robots that you fought against, or were they people? Well, I don't know how I'm going to see the chat. Oh, I, I glance over something. I, I saw the chat last night. Like, no! I got the sucky gun. I hate this gun. It's a lame gun. Yeah, and actually Princess Kate is, is sick right now. She's been in the hospital for a while. She's really sick. She's young. I'm sure she'll be fine. She's like 30 or 40. I don't know. I don't know what she has. Be fine. They're not telling anyone what she has because it's on a need to know basis. Probably has to it, Maybe. Probably. One, I'm sorry for that random fact. Oh, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Ah, I got hit. So, um, you can actually increase your lives to seven in this game. Um, from all the stuff that I did during the story mode. And then there are certain characters you can unlock. I died! From future Contra games. So the blonde girl from Contra 3? Or oh. Con Contra. Yeah, I think it's Contra. You can unlock other characters. Other characters from future Contra games, yes. This is the start of the new Contra. Uh, you know. I jumped differently trilogy. than my human counterparts. I'm literally jumping. Oh, like, I'm, I don't jump the same as humans. No, you're a robot. I can like have this glide jump. I wish I wore a nine million dollar tiara when I got my robot. That would be awesome. That's what I plan to do for renewing my robot. Uh, I need a nine million dollar tiara. Yeah. No, they don't even. You don't even. They don't even buy those. The princesses that wear them. Yeah, they just get them from uh, from the crown jewels. They don't, they just allow them to wear them. The queen picks them out, so you don't even get to choose your own tiara. What, not that you would wear them, I'm saying. No, if you I, were, I don't. if you were a princess getting married, the queen actually chooses the tiara that you're allowed to wear. Okay, so yeah, um, they said that, Chad says that, yes, in mm. the Probotector game, the enemies and the humans were all turned into robots to past censorship. So it was robots fighting robots. Okay, thank Robots you. in disguise. Thank you, Chad, resident um, Contra fan in the chat. Contra expert fan. We'll go avid fan. And Majo even says, yes, they were all robots because censorship. Thank, thank you, Majo and Chad. Europe did not allow violence against other humans. Well... Why didn't they turn Final Fight into Robot Fight? I feel <laughs> or like Street I've, Fighter because I feel like I've been tainted as an American having to see Roadrunner and other violent cartoons. Roadrunner's not that violent. Commencing mission. Roadrunner. I feel ashamed. Off. I feel ashamed that I left. What the heck is this gun? Of course, no, I don't. What is this? I don't think Roadrunner is that violent. Ooh, wait, that's that's machine gun. Machine gun is awesome for Stanley. That's useful. That's kind of cool. Stanley has a cool machine gun. Um, what kind of... Oh, I have this. Pew, 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 pew. I'm playing you say it. Why? I don't know. I've always said pew, pew, pew. You're so relaxed on the third stream. Why are you like this? At 6 p.m., you're always stressed out. I'm always stressed out. I, I also... Understand. I got my YouTube short up, so that'll help, like, basically stabilize you. For, like, How can you live hours. being this much stressed? I can't. That's why I watch. You should just relax and not even worry about the views. They're gonna be bad anyway. No, I can't have that attitude. I have to stabilize. I do. Nope. I have to stabilize. <laughs> like you, you run the YouTube channel like you're a submarine. You're like, uh, what's his name? I'm Conrad in Red October. Yeah, that's how you run the YouTube channel. Yeah. Like you're just like they're after us. <laughs> it's life or death now. It's like what? Not too much. Right? But Luke, no one is shooting missiles at you. Uh, yes, they have. Been. Uh -huh. I have evidence of people who have shot missiles at you. Mm -hmm. If you get, if you do the Sean Connery voice, then you're allowed to be. 
I was stressed out of you. That's that like button. <laughs> dive, dive, dive. <laughs> I love that movie. I don't think I've ever seen that movie with you, but I watched it once on my own. I really um, liked it a lot. I thought we had it on Amazon. I, I really liked that movie. That movie is awesome. That was when Alec Baldwin, I actually liked him. I think he was in that. He was the character, or he was the guy playing the CIA agent. I really don't like Al Alec Baldwin anymore. Like, he just. I don't know, he doesn't play good roles anymore. So, I've actually seen this game on um, PlayStation. It plays much faster on PlayStation. I don't even know how you're supposed to. I don't even think the Switch version allows for more than two players. I think the, mm. the PlayStation one allows for it online. But That's I don't know. Okay. I just have you and I watched the way forward guy talking about the game and he said that they that was six months ago the interview. Oh wait. What? Oh that's why you were talking about Way Forward. Way Forward made this? Yeah, Way Forward made this. Oh, Way Forward I didn't as, that. this is not their first contra game. I thought you were saying Way Forward should make a game like this. Like, no. Oh, they did No, make they did it. make this. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. It's well done. It's well done and it carries the spirit of Contra. Yeah, they do do a good job of keeping true to the original idea of the game. Contra was hard as nails. This game's pretty hard, too. I'm just reeling from the scene from Tifa and, and Cloud today. I just didn't... I'm upset. What an interesting... Ba bam ba bam ba bam Robots taking down other guys. Ow! Now, I don't know if there's a continue system or not. Like, I, we're doing arcade modes, we're not doing story, so I don't I don't know what's going to happen. When the spiky thing comes over to the right, I need to Oh, I can fly over it. Well, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. So I'm supposed to jump? How do I know when the spiky thing's coming out? Now he's coming in the front. So what basically, the? The, everything's in reverse now. And he laughs at you. Oh. Ouch! Or a robot. I don't have to feel the sad when my robot dies because it's just a robot. Chapter done. Da 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 da. Should be. Oh wait, no, no, it's not. No, I'm sorry. We we haven't gotten to the mutant boss yet. There's two bosses in every contra level. So this this game has um eight stages in total. Yeah. Yeah, eight stages. Uh. Similar to, uh, actually, I think the original Contra games only had six stages. Eight stages and okay, thank you, sweetheart. Eight, eight stages and. You're giving me all this information, and I'm just kind of. I'll try to pay attention. So, what stage are we on now? Then? Uh, this is stage two. I just don't understand how you're able to play so many games in this world. Hmm? Like, I don't know how you could have played so many. Mm -hmm. so Let's see, I mean, I play, there's 365 days in a year, I played, most of my video game playing was done uh, on the weekends, so I would watch my cartoons, and then uh, the rest of the day would be spent, uh, you know, after I was done with my homework, I would be allowed to play video games, and I would play NES and Super Nintendo games. Mm -hmm. I would go to Mr. Pete's, and on Friday night, on the way home from school, um, after I did my allowance, I had five dollars, and that would get me two games and a liter of soda at Stewart's, um, Stewart's, Stewart's gas station store. Please. Oh my gosh, what kind of soda did you get? Orange. Oh, you didn't get caffeinated soda? No. I didn't, oh. I did get addicted to coffee in junior high because that's the only thing they would serve at church, so I would have, like, a oh lot of coffee. Oh my gosh! That's terrible! Yeah, that's how I got a coffee addiction. They're serving drugs at church. That's terrible. I mean, most most churches have coffee. I know that. So, you know, the little church ladies wouldn't be monitoring, so I would, you know, oh. I would I would get I, I would get the coffee, and then i put the creamer in it and the sugar. That's a good choice, the orange soda, because it's not caffeinated. No, I didn't I didn't drink a lot of caffeinated sodas, but I did drink a lot of coffee. I have to say, orange and grape soda are so good. It, it, also, my, code my coffee red. addiction got so bad in junior high that like I would actually start drinking the coffee at my my parents' 
Like. Oh, gross. Yeah, and then eventually, like, when the doctor told me when I was like a teen, he told me when I was like 16, I need to cut the coffee because I was having too much. Um, so I, I stopped drinking coffee and I became a tea drinker. And I've been a tea drinker ever since. Yeah, I had caffeine addiction when I was younger as well. Except also, for it wasn't coffee. Also, it was soda. the back in the 90s, we didn't know that aspartame was bad. So I was oh. actually I was using sweet and low in my coffee. I wasn't using People still sugar don't packets. believe me that it's bad, but it is so bad. My heart rate was I, very high that my doctor told me at when I was 16 years old that I need to stop drinking coffee because I'm probably going to have a heart attack like at 17. So it's very bad like yeah. My my teacher was a nurse for 25 years in medical assisting. I told her, I think, because I, I would come to class and I would have my coffee with Splenda because your family got me on Splenda, which is aspartame, which is, which is basically poison. No, I'm not even going to pull my punches on this. It's poison. Yeah, aspartame is bad. Uh, but basically, like, I used to come every day driving from Boston and my hands would be shaking and I would be like, well, I had coffee, maybe that's it. And my teacher was like, no. She's like, what do you put in your coffee? I was like, Splenda. She's like, you're going to need to put real sugar in. She's like, your hands are shaking because you're putting the Splenda in. And then I started looking up everything that's in aspartame and it's disgusting. Like, I, I still won't tell Luke what it actually is in aspartame. If you guys ever look it up online, you will vomit knowing what you've actually been drinking. It is very, 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 okay, let's very not, bad. Let's not get our extreme attack. <laughs> what? By an by a aspartame company? Oh, Bring it on. Me. Those people are evil who make that product. Relax, relax. Okay, so Amber has game over. Um, I think that Amber can continue if I continue. I don't know if there are continues. We're playing arcade mode. So, um... Playing as Stanley. If I get a game over, I'm gonna play the game as Lucia Zero, and then we'll try the challenge mode or something. Yeah, I used to get. I used to have like a liter or two. My family would have those huge liters of Coke when we would get them from Aldi's or something, and I would drink like two liters of soda a night to get my homework yeah, done. But back to what you were asking and about. It was so not good for me. From 1990. 1991 until 1996, every weekend, yeah. I would rent two games from Mr. Pete, because, you know, I did chores and stuff, and sometimes I didn't use, like, all my, um, allowance. Sometimes I'd actually try to save up for a game that I would own, um, but for the most part, you know, I couldn't afford to own a game, except for, like, if a pa family member got a game at Christmas or my birthday. Like, I, I owned very few games. I rented so, like, because game costs, people forget this, but people are complaining about games being $70 or $60 today. When I was a kid, games were $70 to $60. The bad games were in a bargain bin for $25 at, like, Walmart or Target or Sears or something. Like, and they would be in this weird, um, red cardboard envelope where they would have like plastic over the game mm -hmm. and you could see the cartridge but the, the game was bad it was terrible um yeah but i actually picked up a really good game that they said was terrible because it wasn't selling called mm -hmm. kickmaster so, in 1993 so you were mostly renting these games i mostly rented games yeah and what happened was like you know because the weekend was friday saturday sunday i would play the two games on friday saturday yeah and then like um by Sunday night, hey, usually I would beat there. it. So then the next week, and I had something to look forward to because I would rent two games that I hadn't played before. So how much does it cost to rent a game? Just wondering. You At know. Mr. Pete's in the nineties? Yes. Uh, you could get. Usually, my dad would go with me sometimes if I didn't go solo. Uh, it would cost one dollar to rent one movie. Oh my gosh! Are you serious? Yep, one dollar to rent one movie, and it would be fifty cents for a pack of popcorn. Wow! And then what did the pack? How big was the pack of popcorn? What do you mean a pack? Um, pack of popcorn. Back what does this the, mean? Is this like a pre-popped bag, or you have to pop it yourself? It was a. It was oh. a. Um, it came in a, a tub. Yeah. And it had microwave instructions, so like oh. it was like it was like a, a movie like a movie theater style. It's like a movie bin of popcorn, but then you pop. You then pop, you put you, it in the you microwave. Op you open it up. And then oh. you would stick the mic. Uh, you would stick the the popcorn inside of the microwave, like your biggest bowl in the microwave, and then you would put it in the 
in the the the, the, the I think I may have whatever. seen one of those at a blockbuster. One yeah, time. yeah, they used to sell those at blockbuster. So Mr. Pete sold the same thing. So games were cheaper. Games were seventy five cents. Wow. Well, NES games were seventy five cents. It was a buck twenty five for a Super Nintendo game. So, like, you know, if I had a five dollar allowance, I would get sometimes like maybe I didn't feel like playing an NES. Oh my or, gosh! Uh, you know. I was thinking you were getting like forty dollars for your allowance and then saving up for two weeks so you could buy a sixty dollar game or something. No, 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 no. no. I was like, man, you guys even, are more rich. Even when I had a paper route in like nineteen ninety four, it took like two months. Two or three months working my paper route to be able to afford one brand new Super Nintendo cartridge. Yeah, because weren't they more than sixty dollars back then? Sixty to seventy dollars, yes. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yep. When so, people complain today, like. But here's here's you know, how like, oh, I. Oh, it's this a forty dollar game. Yeah. I can't afford this. It's like do you have Th any. This idea? is how I made my game collection. And it was though. actually it was actually more expensive per. It's actually more expensive now because of inflation is more, but games right. are the same. So Mr. Pete didn't know what to do with the games that weren't selling. And since I had rented several times some of my favorite games, he gave me a discount and he would sell me the games. Wow, so, that was nice. Yeah, I would get like old NES games that I had rented years ago. And I would only have to pay like in order to pay off what he said the game was. Because he had like a... A piece of paper that said how much stuff was worth. This was before eBay. Yeah. So he would be like, all right, so this is what the seller market cost of this game is right now. He says, I'll give it to you for 25 cents. What? Yeah. So I, you know, sometimes if I couldn't find a new game to rent, because Mr. Pete didn't always get brand new games. Like, sometimes he would go to, like, something else and he would get, like, Blockbuster's old stock or Hollywood video or whatever. Yeah. So, like, if the games weren't selling, because, I mean, we lived in a small town. There was, like, 300 people in the town, right? Not every one of them was a gamer because it's not something you wanted to advertise at school. Yeah. So in my town of 300 people, there was only 10 gamers. So you played the games. Mm-hmm. Without even talking about it at school? Yep. Like, you didn't even play it for clout to be like, Hey, I played the new Spider-Man game. Nope. So you just played them for your own pure enjoyment? Yep. Wow, you couldn't talk to people so about interesting. it. interesting. You couldn't talk to them. Like, it was... You couldn't talk to, um... Uh, it's other so your different. other peers about gaming because like you would get ostracized. <laughs> so gaming today is completely opposite. Everyone's always writing on Twitter exactly what they got. Hey guys, I got the new game three days early. Yeah, you would get made I fun have... of. Like gaming was seen as like if you were a, a in junior high or you were like in fifth or fourth grade and you were playing video games, you'd get shamed. Why? Why was, would people be mean? It was okay to play Power or watch Power Rangers or something, but it wasn't okay to play video games. They saw that as a little kid. So if you were a gamer, you didn't talk about it, especially if you were in high school. Even though like more people were playing like N64 and Pokemon, no one talked about it. So anyway, going back what? to the 90s. So um, I actually got Contra, the original Contra on NES and Super C. I got oh, both okay. games for 50 cents in total. Yeah. Because Mr. Pete was liquidating his stock. So you got like, Contra for I stuff. got Contra and Super C, one of some of the games I rented a lot in the early 90s on the NES. And when it came time for him to get rid of his NES because it wasn't selling anymore and he wanted to get more Genesis and 3DO games. Yeah. He just like was like, I was going to throw these out anyway. You're like my number one customer, so you can have them. <laughs> Did he say literally you're my number one customer? He said I was his number one, yeah. Because <laughs> I was there every day. And also, remember, Mr. Pete had like a freakish mutation because he was a firefighter that was in that accident. Yeah, I So his that. face was Two-Face. Yeah, I remember you telling me you know, that. He looked like Tommy Lee Jones Two-Face. So, and some people were mean about oh, that? Oh, some people were very, like, prejudiced toward him, yeah. How I, could you be prejudiced towards a firefighter who exactly. saved people's lives? Yeah. So, I mean, I always showed him respect. How I always could, said... Who would do that? I always told him how my day was going. You know, he was basically like... If you ever saw the show Boy Meets World, he was kind of like my Mr. Feeny. Yeah. Like, I would see him once a week on the weekend. I would, you know, talk shop with him for a few minutes. I would sit there and read his magazine. Um, cause he would get like a gaming magazine and I couldn't afford a gaming so, magazine. what you're saying was you were a nice kid. I guess so. You know, I mean, I'm I didn't, I didn't have a problem that. with how people looked. I understood that, you know, he was a hero and he, you know, he got that way because he saved somebody's life. Oh um, God. but, you know, I, I, 
I remember when he was getting rid of his NES stack because they weren't selling anymore. No one was renting them. Everybody yeah. was renting, like... TV shows on VHS was a big deal by, like, 1994. So, like, all his old NES games, he literally was sitting there with a garbage bag when I came in one day. And he was just tossing all his cartridges, and I was like, Uh, don't, don't you have to do something with those? He's like, yeah, you're right. Here, you can have them. I was just gonna junk them anyway. <laughs> really? Yeah, he didn't want to drive to the dump. Oh my god. So he gosh. just gave them to me. I mean, they weren't selling. And you have to remember, it was back during a time where... After a video game console had run its course, the games were you were worthless. That's sad. That's sad because how would they have known that a lot of those retro games would be like insurmountably expensive later on? Oh, that's not the worst thing. He had one of the most expensive and rarest NES games, and like, yeah. I didn't get it from him. But if I would have gotten that game, that game is worth like four or five hundred dollars. It's like a a weird like um Olympic game or something like that, some championship game. Um, he was. Like, he threw it in the trash, and he asked me, he was like, do you want this? I said, I rented it once, it sucked. He says, good enough for me. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm looking you back, gotten I could have gotten, if I would have just said, I'll take it anyway, I could have had that really um, high collector's item NES game that people literally, in the mid-2000s, paid like thousands of dollars Why would they own. pay thousands of dollars it was for just a game rare. that was terrible? It was just rare. Oh, it was probably rare because it was terrible and nobody yeah, liked nobody it. Nobody liked it, yeah. So, I literally mm. watched him like throw out the LGN Spider-Man games and that like really famous um, sports game. And I didn't even, you know, I, I was like, kind of like, wow, you're really going to give me these games? He's like, yeah. He says, whatever you can fish out of the trash that doesn't have, like, he says, I, I just dumped a pizza. And even back then, I had a problem with germs. So any of the games that were covered in food, I just didn't bother with because I couldn't touch them. Wow, Luke. So I, I had a germ phobia even as a little kid. That's weird, Luke. And blame my grandma. She was always telling me, like, all these horrible things if you didn't wash your hands. My, my my Portuguese oh grandmother, my she kind of made me a worry wart a little bit. But that doesn't always happen to people. Like it doesn't matter. She was watching Geraldo and other things. No, and... you don't need to wash. You can wash as long as you wash your hands before you eat. That's Honey, the main thing. I was like, like washing your hands before you eat. If you have some germs on your hands, you're walking around. It's probably not going to kill you. You right. have to wash but them before again, you eat. I, do you know how old I was? I was, like, between the ages of... When I went to Mr. Pete's to rent video games with my parents, I was around, like, six or seven years old. And I was there until... I lived in that town until I was, like, 12. Mm. So, like, you know. Yeah. If, well, it, if it had food stains on it or it looked like... Sometimes, like, the cartridges come back and they look like they had blood on them. Like, I would never rent those again. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen... <laughs> I know, I think we've gotten some from GameStop where we got, like... Stains and used... stuff, yeah. We got some used games that we had to cover for this channel and it had, like, blood stains on them. Yeah. It was like, what so, happened here? Was there even, a murder going on? Even, even back then... And I remember, okay, so I had, I had Mega Man, my copy of Mega Man 3 was like the, I got it from Mr. Pete, the, the, um, the art on the game itself was ruined, and that's because, like, um, Mr. Pete sold it to me, this was before he did the, you know, dump stuff, he was like, you really like, you've rented Mega Man 3 like four times, it's like, how much you buy it off me, he says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you how the world works, I was like, okay, like, what, how much are you selling this for, he says, well, it's got a stain here. I said, well, I don't want it. It has a stain. He says, okay, hold on. And he took the cover, and he peeled off part of the cover. Oh, my God. And he's God. like, there you go. He says, uh, give me uh, three bucks for it, and you can have it. And I was like, but you just ripped the cover. He says, the cover doesn't matter. He says, I'll give you the box. I'll throw you in the box. I didn't throw out the box. So, so I had Mega wow. Man with half of the... Because remember, there used to be peels on the NES games. Like, they used to have, like... Yeah. The, the, so he peeled off the half that had gunk on it, and he gave it to me. He says, three bucks. And I yeah. was like, uh... Later, like, you know, when I had to sell those games to the pawn shop people, they're like, some of these games we can't accept because the labels... How am I going to sell this? It says it just says Luke on them. And I was like, yeah. Uh, oh, it is the game. Actually, yeah, there are certain things you have to be really careful about for, like, germs. If it has blood on it, you do not want to get a blood disease 
because it, there are some diseases that come through blood that you like, say you would accidentally have a scratch on your hand and touch the blood and it would touch your cut, you could get a deadly disease from the blood on the cartridge, theoretically. So actually, that would be one thing that you would want to make sure you want to get off of the cartridge. Wash your hands, wear gloves. Probably throw the entire thing away if it has blood on it. I no, wouldn't if he touch had, it. If he had weird stuff coming in... I wouldn't in. touch it. But if it's like food stains or something, you could probably wash it off yeah. or wipe it off. Well, I mean, the only reason the thing got ruined is because he did, um... Like, he used an alcohol swab on it. I didn't realize this, but when I took medical assisting classes, they talked about how... They told us that we were in danger of getting certain diseases from just working in the medical field. Because if we sat on a needle that ended up having a syringe that had a deadly disease in it, we could end up getting a disease for the rest of our life. And I was like, I think that was basically what made me not want to be a medical assistant. Because so I was like, you're telling me I could potentially get a disease that- Because there are some diseases that no you cannot cure them. Like, you'll have it for the rest of your life. And they're bloodborne diseases. Lovely. Yeah, like, like certain ones. I don't want to mention it, but it's, ugh. like some of the hepatitis ones and some other ones. Like there are some diseases where you can never. Yeah, let's move You on. will always have that move for the on, rest of on. your life. So yeah, some some of my my games that I got from him, like they weren't in the best shape, and like he knew that I had problems with certain things. So he would try to make me feel better by, like, literally ruining stuff or taking his alcohol swab stuff to, like, get stuff off of it before he would have me buy it. Because remember, he's going to junk them anyway. So he did that up until... And then when his store was going, like, when he was moving away from the rental stuff in 1996 and he heard I was moving, he was like, well, one of my best customers for the, you know, the video game thing is done, so I'm not even going to go and get this N64. He was like, I heard you're leaving. He says, I got a parting gift for you. And in the back room where he used to keep, like, all the really scary, like, um, R-rated horror movies, yeah. there was this bin that was, like, this big. And it said, yeah. best of luck to you in Illinois, Luke. And oh. inside inside the bin wow. was probably, like, 50 to 40 Super Nintendo and NES games just thrown in there. Oh, wow. Because he wasn't, you know, he wasn't doing them anymore. He had some Genesis ones in there, but I, I said, I don't have a Genesis. He's like... Ah, he says, maybe you'll get a Genesis in, uh, in Illinois. He says, I'm gonna miss you, kid. So, that's how I got my... That, that's how I got into collecting video games was through Mr. Pete. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how it happened. Like, I got, you know... I, 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 got, I got to stay into the retro thing. Yeah, and then you sold them all for my room. I sold all of them but ten. I kept my really favorite games that I couldn't part with. Like, um, Ninja Turtles... Arcade, like the three Ninja Turtle games on the NES, I kept all those. Turtles in Time, I kept on Super Nintendo. Um, my gold cartridges of the NES Zelda games, which my grandfather got for me, I never got rid of. And uh, my Link to the Past, I, I kept, and my gold cartridge on the N64, I kept. Okay. And like maybe Smash Brothers and Goldeneye. I think that's it. Yeah, I mean like. Things that you would need to wash your hands before doing. Putting contacts in. Preparing food. Mm. Um, putting a band-aid on. Make sure you wash that affected area. You know, eating food would be something. One second. Or, or short. Time. Sorry. Hey guys, um, if you could take like uh, 20 mm. seconds and watch this Tifa short, would be fantastic. Yeah, but like generally like. Yeah, I mean, actually, using alcohol swabs on the game is the best thing you could probably do. Because if you use isopropyl alcohol, like, that's what they use on... That's what they told me to use on piano keys. Mm -hmm. That's a very gentle way to clean... Uh, they use that to clean the musical instruments, so... It's probably the most gentle cleaner you can use. Like, so it's not too bad to use alcohol to clean Oh, stuff. no, he, he did that, but also, you know... It, but it, it may have ruined it a little oh, bit. Oh, it ruined the the ones that had the labels on those cartridges? It ruined them. Yeah, but you wouldn't have bought it anyway with the stain. No, I wouldn't have. So That's why he did that. Yeah. He knew me. He knew what I didn't like, you know. I wish your grandma hadn't made you feel like everything was diseased because, like, 
you know, like... I got messed up after I broke my arms, and then I, I was in part... Like, the rest of my summer was spent at my grandparents' house because I couldn't do anything. Like, my parents were like, well, you know, <laughs> we're gonna stay in New York because, like, uh... Like, it's, it's like, it's like... You know that a lot of people, I just was listening to the radio, did you know that there are a lot of people that are worried about that kind of stuff? Did you know that 10% of people in America, when they go to a hotel, they bring their own sheets? I've heard of that, yeah. 10%! That's a lot! So, when, when I broke my arms badly, that's when a lot of my fear stuff happened, because before then I was a little kid that felt like I was invincible. In fact, I thought that I could jump past the bulldog. Without, you know, and land on the, my feet like the, like the cat that The jumped. reason I don't worry about, like, germs and stuff is because I know, you know, if I worry about germs... Like, say say somebody brings over some muffins that I know. If I know them, I can... I'm fairly certain they didn't poison the muffins. They're probably not let's trying not, to kill me. Let's not get into that. So, you know, maybe they got some dirt on the muffins, but it's probably going to be fine. Yeah. But... The reason why I choose to trust people and just not worry about germs is because it just, I don't want to live like the kind of person who would sit there and worry about that kind of stuff. I want to be, I want to be a trusting person and I want to be somebody that shows people that I, you know. I said I was fine as a little kid yeah. and then I got in, I broke my arms badly and then I was with my grandma for three months. Yeah. Like I was there while, you know. My family went back to, um, my mom and I stayed with my grandmother and my grandfather yeah. because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go to school. I couldn't do anything. Like, I broke my arms in May of, um, 19... So your grandma took care of you. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, she took care of me. Um, I broke my arms in May of, um, 1990... 91? 90? And I couldn't do anything. I couldn't play my NES. Although I found a way. You, like you know how like I'm I'm able to hold controllers weird behind my head and it became really flexible and stuff. So um, I learned. I adapted and found ways of playing video games non-traditional ways so I could play because my arms were permanently for like six months in a feral position. Yeah. Because I broke both of them. So. I had to learn to basically hold a controller backwards in order to play my favorite game because I had nothing else to do. I could watch TV, but TV were in reruns. And the tapes that my grandma had for cartoons, like I liked what I liked about video games is I was able to do something new. I was able to do something that one I was in control of. Yeah. And like, you know, I dictated what happened to the characters. So that's why I really got into RPGs and stuff is when so I broke my arms. you had your video games from... Oh, wait, no, you didn't get the video games until after that. No, I mean, I, NES came out in 1985. I got my NES that in was... 1987. So you broke your arms after... Yeah. Before you met Mr. P. Yes, I broke my arms before I met Mr. P. So it had to be either 1989 or 1990 when I broke my arms. And you had, like, excruciating pain for, like, a year? Mm-hmm. Well, I actually got one of my arms out of my cast. Like, I was in... I was in, like, feral position for about three months. Both arms, like, against my chest like a freaking pharaoh. Um, and, like, were you super sad? Well, yeah. People had to help me eat. I, I had everything I had to help with. Just, my grandpa so joked... Sorry. My grandpa joked about getting me a diaper. He said it'd be easier. And that was humiliating. Wow. You know, yeah. Well, Grandpa liked to tease me a lot. Disturbing. Well, right. I mean, I guess that makes it funnier. He did make sense because he's like, I'm in the food industry. I can't help him. He says, I, I sell hot dogs for a living. You want to know what the secret sauce is? You know, he's like, wow. stuff like that. You know, he's like, I don't want to tell him. Yeah, you know, I, I did wash my hands and I helped my, my grandson. Can't use his arms. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I was... Most of the Portuguese family members made fun of me that summer. It was a nasty summer. I did not have fun. Um, but I eventually found I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let this broken arm thing get me down. So I learned how to hold my... I asked my grandpa to hand me the controller for the game system. He's like, how are you going to play it? I said, I'll figure it out. So he gave me the controller, and I learned to play it upside down. Because remember, I was oh holding... Oh, my god! Yep, I was holding it... Um, 
like a pharaoh, so my hands were crossed. So I had to learn how to play it reverse. Wow. Yeah, and then, you know, what was funny is like three and a half months, or two and a half months later, I got the cast off for one arm, and then I could actually like kind of live again, but my arms, the doctor who put it in that weird position, there was problems that happened because my arms became like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They were misformed. Because that, like, you know, yeah. I was going through a growth spurt. So, wow. like, because they were in that mummy position or pharaoh position, which wasn't cool, and the doctor made a mistake, like, my arm should have been in a different position. It shouldn't have been crossed. Like, I had to get physical therapy and all kinds of stuff because, like, I was in the cast so long, my arms became, like, little girl arms. I'm sorry. Oh, it was terrible. Kids made fun of me all the time. Like, mm -hmm. so, I mean, Mr. Pete and I had something in common when I would go to see him because, like, my arms... <laughs> looked like, you know, kind of like freakish, uh, small, thin, like, I don't even know how to describe it. It was almost like bone with skin. Like, oh my god. That's how bad my arms look. That's why you can't, I refuse people in my family to show pictures of what I looked like in the summer of 1990 because, like, I, I tried to wear, like, sweaters that would, like, kind of bulk up my arms. Even though it was wicked hot out, because I don't want people to make fun of how, like, you know... And, like, your family could see your arms were messed up, or...? Yeah, my dad and mom never made fun of me, but, like, like the Portuguese family said some pretty nasty stuff. To a little kid? To a little kid, yeah. How could you make fun of a little kid? I mean, they had a lot of material to work with. <laughs> oh, my... Why would they do that? It seems really mean. Yep, but Grandpa never said a joke about my arms. He just made fun of the fact that I needed help eating and other stuff. Wow. But he was pretty impressed when I found a way to play the video games, like, as the Pharaoh. He called me the Pharaoh for a while. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Why would they do that to your arms, Lou? I don't know. It's not every doctor that's, you know, really good at their job. That's for sure. You know? Also, I, I was mad at my aunt, because you remember the story. Like, she always tells it differently, but I remember it in vivid detail. Like, they lived oh. in a dirt road. So, oh, when right. I had just broken my arms, they didn't get an ambulance because they didn't want to foot the bill. So, that they drove terrible. me in a pickup truck. Wow. A bumpy roaded pickup truck to so the they, hospital. So, they basically tortured you. So, the hospital was about 45 minutes from my aunt where I broke my arm. arms. I had hairline and compound fractures at like nine years old. Eight or nine years old. Oh, why didn't they just get an ambulance? Why didn't they get an ambulance, exactly? Because, like, well, my didn't parents they have would health pay insurance? for it. Um, they... most people didn't, weren't forced to have health insurance, so... I don't know if we had health insurance. But my dad wanted to get an ambulance, and my mom did, but my aunt was like, Oh, we live so close to it, we'll just go in the pickup truck. 40 and it's minutes like, is it was close? Four, yeah, 40 minutes is close, exactly. That's why when you talk to my family, it's like, and they say stuff like, oh, it's close. That usually means it's like 40 or like 35 yeah, minutes away. Yeah, their version of close their is Their version not. of close is different than our version of close, yeah. My version of close is less than five minutes away. So little Luke was wailing the whole way there. Because like, you know, and then my aunt, my uncle, who I have a better relationship with, but when I was a kid, he was yelling at me for crying because like, you know. But you were in severe pain. I was in severe agony. I almost like... Uh, you probably could have passed out from the pain. From the trauma, yeah. It was pretty bad. It was pretty messed up, Blue. Mm -hmm. I'm that surprised was... you didn't die from that. I, I mean, you know, my dad promised to get me a video game or something if I was good. Like, good? Withstanding torture for 40 minutes? Well, I mean, he was very proud of me. Um, and my dad was actually holding me, like, to try to... Or try to limit the bumps. Why didn't your parents just drive you to the hospital? Um, I don't remember what was wrong with our car. Randomly? Your family had something wrong? Why didn't your dad just call the ambulance? What happened? Well, I mean, it was the 90s. You have to remember that things were different. Like, I don't understand. I know. I didn't have a flamethrower, so we died. You mean that there was no cell phones? That's what well, there mean. was no cell phones, and also, if I remember correctly... My aunt came and picked us up for the day. So I think that everybody carpooled to save gas money. Wow. See, this is why whenever somebody asks me to carpool, I say no. no. <laughs> because yeah. I don't want to be in a position where I'm like, I feel uncomfortable, 
you know, I, Barney the dinosaur is here and he wants to sing a song and I want to leave and there's no car coming to pick me up. I'm getting stressed out here. Or like everyone's, you know, in Snuggies in the field and they're saying weird <laughs> stuff. Chad is like, if you live, I'll get you a video game. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what my dad used to do. So when I had teeth surgery at like 10 years old, because I had like problems with my teeth, um, I had to have like a, a several teeth removed. And my dad said afterwards, when I was like all like Novocaine'd up or whatever, he was like, he says, you did a great job, sport. He says, we're going to the video game store. And I had like the, the, the stuff in my mouth and I couldn't open. I was like, woo, woo. So he, I, I, I'm, I'm, sit, I'm going around the video game store, Babbage's, and my eyes are all bushy tail. I'm looking around because he said, whatever games I could, if I could hold two games in my hand, he would buy them for me. And that's when PC games were just coming out and we had a PC. And so I saw Monster Bash on PC and I saw this really cool game on the Super Nintendo and I, I, I could, because I was all Novocaine'd up, so it was hard for me to, to hold on to the, the, the big PC boxes that they used to have and the Super Nintendo game. So I had the Super Nintendo game under my chin and I was holding, like, because remember, I had, like, this was after my arms were broken. My arms, like, I had to go through physical therapy for, like, years to get, like, arm strength back. So even, like, years after, like, my arms were pretty weak. So yeah. I, I was I was clutching as hard as I could to the Monster Bash um, PC game, which the box was about this big. PC boxes were about this big. Oh wow! So I was I was holding on with that, and then I had the I had the Super Nintendo game under my chin, and I'm I'm walking up to the the register all happy, and my and my dad <laughs> oh my god my dad picked Luke. me up, he picked me up and he sat me on the register and I I kind of just kind of went eh. And I handed it to the guy, and he's like, are you okay? And he's like, he's fine. He had an orth orthodontist appointment. And he's like, he seems happy. He says, well, I, if he did really good at the orthodontist, he's, I promised to get him some games. He says, you realize, sir, that this PC game is full price. And the guy was, and my dad's like, well, what do you mean full price? I thought it was a shareware thing. And he's like, no. He says, well, I promise. He said, so what's the damage? And the guy says, well, this is a new release for PC, so it's a little cheaper than the Super Nintendo cartridge that you got which was 70 and so the the pc game was like 40. oh wow yeah so that's like 110 dollars oh my god 100 and 110 dollars in like 1992. Yeah, that would yeah. have been like a third of rent or something that was I, that was uh my mom and dad both work so i think that was part of my dad's paycheck for that um week or month something like that Oof. yeah but he did it and he didn't complain either. He was like... My my dad was similar. My dad, when I... Well, not anything cool like that, but if I would go grocery shopping with him, sometimes he'd get me a dollar frosty. But he wouldn't tell my mom because my mom was really... She didn't... You know, she was paying attention to money and making sure we only spent $30 for groceries. So we would only spend $30 a month for groceries. My mom would painstakingly make sure that we, you know, because we didn't have that much. Mm -hmm. So, like, my dad would get a Frosty for a dollar, which was a tremendous expense yeah. back then. So, the reason why <laughs> PC games be suddenly became PC Master Race, even with the CD-ROM stuff later on, is because, for the most part, Genesis and Super Nintendo cartridges were $70. PC games which were on floppy disks. Yeah. They were only about, like, a brand new PC release would be anywhere between $50 to $40. Wow. So it was considerably cheaper, and PC games had better graphics. So, you know, when I got home and my dad installed Monster Bash, which I remember it took hours to install, because, yeah. you know, it was a PC game, uh, while he was doing that, I was playing Street Fighter on my Super Nintendo. But I don't even Whoops. remember the Super Nintendo game that I picked up that day. Like, I, I would have to go back and see what year exactly I had the the surgery in my mouth. Because um, I had gum surgery. I had, I had a tooth removed and I had gum, gum surgery as a little guy. Yeah. So, that was incredibly painful. And I, I don't want to describe what gum surgery is. I don't is. want to talk about it's, it. It's painful. I already know what it is. That one dentist described it. Before. Right. Yeah. I don't know why she did that, but now I feel the screw. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna go into it. I'm actually starting to feel weird talking about it. I, whenever I talk about it, the bottom tooth where it was, where it was done, it oh. always tingles to me. It's like I remember it, and it was just like I was in that little orthodontist chair as that little guy for like, oh my gosh, we went at like eight in the morning, and I got to leave like around one o'clock in the afternoon. 
Oh. And by the time we got home, it was like close to five o'clock. So, you know, it was it was crazy. You're stuck somewhere. Oh, good job. All right, there you That's go. That's what I always robot. wanted to get was braces because I didn't get to afford them when I was young. But... I thought, oh, that's what I wanted since I was 20, but I can never afford it now because it's a stupid state of YouTube. But I always, I always wanted to do that because my, my teeth, like, I sucked my thumb when I was little, so I always wanted to crack it. Oh, darn it. I'll never be able to do that. It kind of sucks. Mm. Plus, it's harder to use braces when you're older. Yep, that's... Because it will t it's harder for your teeth to move. It's easier for them to move. Out of all the retro games that I've ever covered, I've never been able to show Monster Bash or the Warcraft games, like the OG Warcraft. Because it brings bad memories? No, or... it doesn't bring back bad memories. I don't have the technology to do it. Yeah, too bad you didn't get into PC gaming from then on. Um, I, I used my PC a lot as a kid, but I didn't... I was a big console gamer. Like, PC stuff was cheaper. My dad was a PC gamer. I was a the, console gamer. The orthodontist I used to work for, he would sometimes have people in there from 8 in the morning till 3 p.m. sitting in the chair. Yep. He would have them all day. The When, when I used to work for him, I... Like, if he had a, um, an orthodontist appointment for a kid, we might clear out the entire schedule. The entire morning until like 3 p.m. Yep. My, my best advice for this part of the level for you is run. Um, these enemies are going to constantly respawn. Your best bet is to keep moving forward. Because what's going to happen is these guys are going to deplete all your life before you get to the boss. And the only way that you can move forward in arcade is by completing the... Uh, uh, killing the boss. You're doing very well, by the way. Hunter games are uh, They are. They're really, really well. I didn't know this, but I actually learned how the teeth move. Mm -hmm. I know how the teeth actually move. I learned Remember, it. you gotta keep moving. I know, but did you know that it... Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it on the air, but it's kind of gross the way the teeth actually move when you have braces. Yeah, I don't, don't want to move. Yeah, it's at... You're doing something to your... Did you know you're actually affecting your actual, like, jaw? Like, your jaw is actually... Ha you're, you're changing your jaw when you do that. Alright, so I have the flamethrower. I'm going to light this guy up. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the fastest way to kill this guy. Flame. If you if you don't have flame, missile Whoops. works too. But flame is his weakness. I don't know why, but Ow. fire is this dude's weakness. It's weird. Yeah, it is kind of weird. Well, I can tell you on off camera what it is. You probably don't want to know, though. Do you see how, like, fire just, like, works really well against this guy? I'm gonna get him. Respawn. But did you know that, like, your teeth and your jaw... Like, your jaw is made of bone and your teeth are made of bone. You know what I mean? See? Fire! Okay. So, like... Good job. So, fun fact, like, did you know, like... Your teeth are not in your gums. They're literally in your jaw. Like, they're literally in your jaw. Like, it would be like a wooden peg in a plank of wood. That's how your teeth are. Like, it cannot move. Like, your your your, your jaw is made of, like, bone and, like, minerals. Yeah, I, 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 I know. So, like, like to oh. actually move it. Oh, oh no! It. I blame that on myself. Oh, no! I shouldn't have been talking. What happens now? Oh, Stupid switch! I'm an idiot. Oh. This is all the switch's fault. Gosh, man, just give us switch two. 2017, 2024. This should have been the year of the switch successor. The hardware is too old. All the games always crash. Like I every, know I've noticed ever since 2023, most of the games we cover on Nintendo Switch, they crash like at least five out of ten times. Hey Zelda, come here, little one. The hardware is Way too forward. old. It's too old. Ugh. I don't think the OLED model would really matter because it's still incorporating the old technology from like, basically there's 2016 technology in the system. It's not like they yeah. we ever got a Switch Pro. 
If they didn't want to do the Switch successor, they should have done a Switch Pro like three years ago. Mm, are we are we going as the girl characters now, or what's yeah, going whatever on? Whatever you want to do. I mean, I might. I I'm gonna stick as Flyer Guy because I like Flyer. I'll guy. be a girl character. Go for it. What what character should I be? Is this the where are the characters here? They're all right up there. So you got her. She's new, and then you have Lucia. Is from uh, like Another lots of Contra one? games. She's been in f three Contra games. Oh, she's been in three. Okay, I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with the girl from this game. She looks cool. I like her hairstyle. Yeah. Question, guys and gals, how often do you remember the Wii U jamming up? I don't remember the Wii U well, jamming that up. That was much. that was a sign. I should stop talking on it, but I did learn from you because braces messed you up more than if I ever end up getting braces someday. Braces do can mess you up if you accidentally choose something wrong because it can actually wreck your teeth instead of help them. They're very fragile, like braces are. You see, that's why I had to do the short. See? See? I see it. I I basically like injected like 200 extra views. So, I mean, if it was possible I, for me to um, do, like, several shorts during a day, if, I can actually bring stuff but up. But, Luke, if we ever, if our kids ever have braces, you should bring them in as often as possible. Yeah, I know. And they have to check it every time and see if there's anything wrong. Because if there's anything wrong, what is happening is if there's anything wrong with your braces, if they... If you dent the wire even a little bit, it can actually mess up your bone of your jaw. Mm. So that's why you have to check it like all yeah, the I time. Know. We, we, I had the braces and we all messed up because we didn't know what we were supposed to do. Also, like the dude who did the braces was in New York and then I went to Illinois. And the guy in Illinois... Was a moron? He didn't do a very good job. The guy I worked for in Massachusetts was really good. Mm-hmm. Like, he was really good. Like, he must have been the best, best orthodontist in the state. He might have been one of the best in the East Coast. He was so good. And, like, people would actually go from other dentists to go to him. The guy I worked with. I love this level. So this is the um, train level, because every Contra game has at least one snow level. And you know what was great about the doctor that I worked with, Luke? Mm. Um... Uh, Dr. Mashad that I worked for, he actually, if somebody had an emergency where his, his braces were bent, like a kid's braces were bent, sorry, I'll get that. What do you want me to do? Yeah, that's fine. Get the laser. Laser's good. So, do you want that? Whatever it No, wants? I have spread. I have the guns that I like to oh, use. Well I then use... why did you say no? Because before I had the flamethrower. Oh. Flamethrower is not good for this level. We're so... going to fight a giant train lizard. So I'm saying, like, the doctor that I worked for, if somebody had a problem, like, they, like, chewed on some, their kid chewed on, like, taffy or something, mm -hmm. he would, he would clear all the appointments. He would literally cancel all the appointments and, and check on, and, and fix the kid's braces that day so, um, to make sure that his teeth weren't messed up. No, that, me... I mean, that's a good doctor. I mean, yeah. there are no doctors like that anymore. So let me explain something to you before. You were asking... I died. Sorry. You what? Um, You were I asking, like, how, how people in the 90s were able to play so many games. is because, like, games today are much longer. Like, this Contra game... Like, if you're really good at this Contra game, like, you can beat it in about, like, an hour and a half. Like, you can go probably through all eight levels. If you're really good at Contra, like, this game is probably only, at the most, two hours long. At the most. So most games in the 90s and the 80s if you were really good at them um they only lasted about an hour or two with exception to rpgs rpgs were very you know they were um labors of love they were pretty long uh, at least like 30 or 40 hours depending on you know what type of rpg it was if it was lunar it was very long um the original final fantasy game i think was like um i'm trying to think how long the og final fantasy was maybe 20 hours but I, I never got through it. But there were, for the most part, most games were not too long at all. And, you know, most kids in the 90s had, uh, you were only allowed a certain amount of time to play video games. Like, you know, unless you somehow did the whole towel trick under your door, like I did, um, in order to fool people late at night, because my, my parents were heavy sleepers because I took advantage of that. Um, yeah. 
And, you know, if I didn't have anything to do, and my problem is I would get addicted, like, to, to gaming because I really like the stories. So, when my Chrono Trigger phase started in 1995, you know, when the game came out or whatever, yeah. um, I would basically, you know, play that so much that I wouldn't be able to stop playing. Chrono Trigger? Mm hmm Why would you play it so much? Right. Wouldn't you just be done with it in two weeks? No. It had multiple endings. I would, I, I got, yeah, I got most of the endings. But before that, in the Why early 90s... Why did you get bored after you played the first ending? No, because I found out there were other endings. So I, I actually got all the endings. Um, but... But um, who could you tell that you did that to? Like, nobody would... Nobody at school you couldn't talk to, and your family probably was like, okay... Um, I mean, I would... I just mean, for yourself? Yeah. You would go through and get all the endings? Yeah, I mean, I would get... Every once in a while, I would get EGM or Nintendo Power Magazine. Like, every once in a while, and, you know, I really... My attachment to Nintendo Power, EGM, and Game Pro magazines as a kid is what made me want to become a game journalist because they were really fun reads. And not only were they fun, but they were funny. Like the authors, like the journalists were like really funny, the reporters. So like a lot of my humor for the, the gaming side, I was inspired. I am a product of those magazines. And the Game Pro TV show that was on cable um, in the mid 90s. Like, that's what inspired me. So when it actually came time for me to do my video reviews, when I'd been writing game facts and other things like, for fun, um, I incorporated the style from Game Pro TV. I just changed it up a little bit so you know it wouldn't look like I was borrowing too much of their homework. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but everybody was like, I remember, I never um, told people like that I was the originator of that style of reviews. Whenever people ask me in the comments, they're like. What inspired you to do the game reviews like the style with the structure? I said Game Pro TV. Yeah, you would actually admit the who inspired it. Yeah, because I said it's kind of an homage, but with my own own take to it. It's kind of a big deal. Because, um, you know, I wanted to give credit where credit was due because those guys inspired me. Um, the IGN Nintendo team, I loved their articles, but I always felt like Nintendo Power was way better at writing, like, both... Um, thought-provoking and really funny game reviews. Yeah. So that's that's where also I incorporated uh, some of my style as well. Because mm -hmm. I, I just, I really enjoyed how much... It looked like they had a lot of fun writing about video games. And they also were really knowledgeable. But yeah, uh, gaming in the 90s, for the most part, most games weren't very long. So over the weekend, if you did rent some video games from Blockbuster or whatever, you would probably have them beat by Sunday night. And then the next week... You know, you probably had something to look forward to, but... What, hap what happens if you didn't beat the game in three days? If you didn't beat it in three days, then if you... What I would do if I didn't beat a game in three days, because there were some, then the next weekend, you know, I would rent the same game again until I beat oh, it. What do you mean the next weekend? So you would have to bring it back on Monday, and then on Friday you'd take it out again? Well, for me, the bus stop was right in front of Mr. Pete's rental place. So I would actually have to walk um, from my house, which was like three blocks from the bus stop. It was like hmm. two to three blocks. So I would actually, I'd have to get up at six in the morning. And then me and my sister, like I would hold her hand because she was like two years younger than me. Yeah. And we would walk to the bus stop, which would be about two blocks from our house. Yeah. So it was right, right by the, um, the Stewart's, whatever it was, the yeah. Stewart's gas station. So Mr. Yep. Pete's laundry room, laundry, laundry and rental store was like right there. So he opened at like seven in the morning or whatever. So on my way to school on Monday morning, I would have the games that I rented or the videos my parents rented in my backpack. And I would walk into the store. I'd say, hey, Pete, he'd be like, hey, Luke. And then I'd drop him off. I'd say, see you Friday. And sometimes he would say, hey, why don't you just uh, rent, you know, during the week? And it'd be like, I can't because I'm only allowed 30 minutes of video games you know on the a weekend. day on the weekdays and then the weekend i have up to two hours oh so you had more time on the weekends right and usually i would i would maximize my video game time from after dinner from like six o'clock until about eight o'clock at night and then when my parents went to sleep and like i said they're heavy sleepers um except on saturday night like saturday night i'd be careful because sunday night you know my dad was a minister so i had to make sure i got up in time so i would not game late at night but friday night 
after my parents went to bed because my mom was tired from working at the hospital or whatever and my dad was tired from his thing they would sleep really really heavy so on friday night i would play video games for about four to five hours i would oh, just wow. I, it would look like i would be done playing after two hours because i would do the pillow trick under the door what's the pillow trick pillow trick is you put you oh, put something you put, like, under the door under to the get door. to get rid of the light oh wow right but I would never do that Saturday night because if I wasn't up in time for church, then it would be a nightmare. Because minister's kid, so. Yep. Yeah. It's. And then Sunday night, I, you know, I didn't want to make Mr. Pete sad uh, by getting the the games late because, like, how he made his money was late fees. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so he sold the stuff cheap, but how he stayed in business over Blockbuster and other people is he had hefty late fees. Oh wow! So you know. I would be the good kid that would drop off the stuff uh, if my dad wasn't able to. Um, and, yeah. And, you know, because it was on the way to the bus stop. It made sense. It saved gas money. Because, um, you know, he didn't drive us to school. We took the bus. Yeah. Um, so I would drop him off at the bus and then uh, the bus stop. I would get on the bus and then, you know, all week I would look forward to oh, either completing the game I couldn't complete or, you know, there might be a new game. But the thing is, yeah. what I was trying to tell people about new games in the 90s, what's different is, like, you guys can tell ever since the 2000s when a new release was coming out. In the 90s, we didn't really have, like, a mm, a very big calendar of when game releases were happening. You would go to the store, and sometimes you would see a new game. For the most part, you would see games that you've, you know, been playing the past yeah. six months. I mean, that's where you get the impression of from even movies in the 80s and 90s, where they go to the game store and it's like, whoa, what's this? So you, like, figure it out that it's out by seeing it on the shelf. Right, but I learned a lot from Mr. Pete, too, because maybe he thought someday I would run his rental store or something. Like, he thought I was going to live in that town forever because, I mean, you know, yeah. there was really nothing in that town. Right? Oh my god. Um, so he taught me, like, uh, he would have a, not a release date thing, but he would have a list of games and movies that would be coming out. But the difference is it wouldn't say things like June, July, August, September. It would say quarter. Oh. So it would say Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. So... And it would have a list of things that could be coming out, but you don't know if they would get delayed or canceled or whatever. So sometimes he'd yeah. be waiting on product that would never come. Because that video game company went out of business, or, you know, they delayed the game a year or two. Do they still go by quarter, or mm, not? Right? Japan does. So I just have a weird question for you, then. Mm. Like, so you were in a small town, like, how many people were on your bus? How many people were in my bus? Yeah. Um, the bus went to... Because there was a major highway, people couldn't walk to school. So, so you had, like, 100 kids on your bus or something? Or? No, we didn't have 100 kids that went in our district. Uh, the grade school had about 40 kids. And that was, like, grade... Um, that was, like, from... Oh, my gosh. Oh, it was, like, 40 kids from still, elementary. That's the entire element, elementary. And it was, like, then you would have a couple buses. There were three buses in our district. And then yeah. junior high and high school were combined in one building. Um, and the entire graduating class, I think, of 1993 for the high school students that was in the newspaper for that town was 15 people. And your bus went to several small towns then? Mm, or just yours? Uh, that, the bus went to, you could be, if you lived really far away, like one time I spent the night at a friend's house, on Friday, and I rode the bus. I was on the bus for 40 minutes. Yeah. So I, I had a bus like that. Yeah. The bus was that was the that kid lived over in the boonies though. Yeah, I I was on a bus um, when I was in seventh grade. We lived in a town outside of our town, and it was uh, five miles outside of town. And um, there must have been 10 kids on the bus. And it took an hour to get home. But you have to remember that wasn't Peekskill though. Peekskill was a huge town. So I, my dad's, my dad was a minister of a town that only had 300 people. There was only two churches in the yeah. entire town. Um, and one of the churches might have been haunted because it was really old and run down. So my dad actually had the. It was like a, the building originally, in the 1950s there was a truck that came down the mountain, and it like. Um, blew up like part of the uh, section of the town 
So the church was unfortunately included in that in the 1950s. So by the 1970s, they were able to build a newer building. So my dad was actually the minister of a building that had only been around for like maybe 20 years, something like that. So it was one of the nicest buildings in that town, um, you know, but it had a very small congregation. I think there was like a total of maybe like 30 people in the entire church. That's where my dad's last church was. It was very small, but there was only one church in the whole town. Yeah, it was, it was a very small. So, I mean, you know, I, I got to learn a lot of stuff. Um, and if we had to go grocery shopping, then we would either go to uh, Springfield, Massachusetts, I think, Bennington, Vermont, or Albany, New York. And whichever place you decided to go, you were in the car for about an hour and... That's ridiculous. Uh, hour and 15 Thanks. minutes. I and have just gotten another fr uh, freezer and just had a lot of frozen meals. Well, how we went, how lot. my dad and it's I went a long grocery, time to go grocery shopping. Yeah, we had to use freezer bags, like yeah. for we would we would get like these really and and we also had um my dad was pretty smart. He uh, when we get ice cream and stuff like that from the grocery store, he would get a cooler. Yeah. And he would stick it. He would go to the gas station and get a big thing of ice. That is really smart. And then he would stick the ice cream and any frozen food that we had inside of the cooler. Be wow. You know. And as long as it was in the summertime, it was okay. But if it was the summertime, the car didn't have air conditioning. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have air a lot of the cars that my family drove didn't have air conditioning. Yeah, my dad was pretty excited when he got a, a Jeep that had air conditioning in 1995. <laughs> he was like, yeah. oh my gosh. Cause we, had, we had to drive down to Texas. Mm. Almost like 13, it must have been 20 hour drive with no air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And we did that every three years. It was, it was excruciating. Yep. It was very hot. Yep, yep, yep. So, you know, uh, I think part of the reason why I had motion sickness in cars as a kid is because of how hot it was in those cars. And remember, those cars were not like the cars of the 2000s. They were made of metal for a lot of them. So those cars yeah. got hot. They did not have yeah. very good circulation. Yeah. But also, when those cars were involved in car accidents, they didn't fold like tinfoil because they yeah. weren't made of aluminum. Well, you know what's really scary? I don't want to scare anyone, but I just was watching something online, and they're researching now that... I don't want to scare anyone, but... You have a knack of doing that. But basically... Our car windows that are automatic, mm -hmm. a lot of them don't work if they're underwater. Yikes. So the fact that we have all these electric windows, and if our car actually goes underwater, we're, we're absolutely screwed. Like, so they're trying to sell, like, devices to people to try to, so they can break. And also, a lot of our windows are reinforced windows, so they can't break if you just kick it with your foot. There is a weakness in your window that you can, if you put your coat around your hand or your elbow, you can break. There's a there's a weak point that's in the, um, even our Jeep has it. I'm saying like eventually I'd want to get like a device or something that they're trying to sell online to try to, in case, you know, your car goes underwater, it'd be good to be able to break your window to get out because it's, it's scary that your window doesn't really work underwater. It's automatic windows. Right, I know. Yeah, well, that's good to know if you can break. Put, what did you say you do? You put your coat on your elbow and then break the window? I mean, like they... Like, elbow the window or something? There's a way, like, if you wrap your elbow with a coat, like, you yeah. can actually smash your hand through most car doors. Or car windows. Mm. Yeah, but they have, like, double-plated glass a lot of the time. That's why you have to make sure that you hit it in the right place. Now, the reason why they do that is because certain cars were made um, for law enforcement to, you know, be able to get per My grandpa taught me how to do it. Oh, really? My grandpa was a police officer. So remember? even, like, some modern cars, you can bust through it? I don't know if it works for a lot of modern cars, but I learned how to do it from cars from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Because I remember, like, that when I was growing up, all the cars that my family had you would have to roll the window down physically roll it mm -hmm. and now it's like everything has a button and you have to sit there and wait like when my car was frozen like um a little bit ago like a f like a month ago when it was really cold outside my windows were frozen shut i could not i know honey
That helped. But I could not roll the window down. Like I, and I had no ability to mm. because it was like frozen. My window was frozen and all I had was this dinky button. Somebody in the chat says my, I'm in one of the last blockbusters. There's... My town, my town, I'm in the town with one of the last blockbuster. The last blockbuster in the world is a bed and breakfast. Mm. It, they they still operate in business, but they're not owned by Blockbuster. They're actually owned by the, the couple that own the store, but they also operate it as a bed and breakfast kind of. It's like a, mm. you can actually pay them money to stay overnight. And like, um, it's kind of like a hotel, but it's pretty expensive, oh, I've heard. What denomination was Luke's dad a minister of? Um, Baptist. I Baptist and um My dad's not my dad's been non denominational now for twenty years. My, Cause my I am uh, I am of the uh Christian reform, says Irene. My aunt and uncle in Pennsylvania are reformed. That's like similar to Lutheran, I think. Or, I think so, yeah. Yeah, my my aunt and uncle are of the reformed church. I've been to that church before. And my dad is finally retiring because he says the world is crazy now, so Supposedly, he has a um, uh, a young minister who's going to take his place, and then my dad, who's been in the ministry for almost 40 years, is finally going to get to retire, and then he said he's going to go back to building computers again. Oh, you're alive again. Oh, my my mom was a missionary till last year, and she's 86. Wow, Irene, that's really awesome. Yeah, I have. I know a lot of my family is Reformed Church as well. There's a Reformed Church near us. I thought about going to. It's very close, but oh, well, there's a lot of them in here in Pennsylvania. Most Pennsylvania towns have at least like 60 churches. Yeah. There's a lot of churches. They're all over the place. Um, I'm trying to think. It when I play like older games like Contra and stuff like that, like nowadays, it's like it does bring back a lot of memories of the nineties and the eighties. Yeah. It just does. So I mean, I think that Wave Forward kind of nailed what they were doing because they made a very challenging thing, but at the same time, like I think that this game has like uh enough quality to it that both like it's got a challenge, but also it, it feels like a Contra game. Like Usually when, when somebody goes and they make something modern, you know? Yeah, they ruin the feel they, of it from yeah, before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I, my mind would have been blown as a 10-year-old yeah. if this game existed back then. <laughs> because, I mean, we had things yeah. like Contra on same, Super Nintendo. It's the same feel as the original. I mean, that's what people don't like. I mean, there's a few people that were saying they don't like what Final Fantasy VII is. They kind of didn't want it. They wanted it to be the same feel as the original, and it, it's not. Most turn-based RPGs don't work very well anymore unless they add a gimmick to it. Yeah, I mean, the truth is they're right, though. It's not the same feel as the original. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake is not the same. Anywhere near the same. We're it's, in like, a... completely updated. We might be in a glitch. Dude, like, we killed all the enemies, but it's not letting us move. There we go. Okay. Because, remember, in Contra, like, the the stuff is, um... You have to wait until you beat all the enemies in order for the screen to move forward. So, sometimes, like, little errors can happen in these, like, modern retellings. And, I mean, this is more than just, like, 2D sprites. This is actually 3D stuff. Like, the Contra game, like, changes up, like, how the appearance is. Yeah. How did you get the train? Da, 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 da. Da, da. Now, what's really cool about my characters, I actually can hover over the, the centipede attacks. Like, you can't, but I can. So, see how those, like, little red things? I can hover above them. And then I don't get hit. <laughs> I'm just hitting his face. So, Stanley is kind of, like, probably one of my favorite characters to play in this because, like, he's kind of a cheap character. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of a gross, um... Oh, the, uh, Contra always has gross enemies. It's Contra. They're aliens. So this girl is the new girl from this... Because I was asleep when she was uh, hanging out. You'd have to ask Chad Isn't and Isn't she the one that died? No. Oh. The lady who died is actually always dies in Contra. She's, how did she keep coming back to life? Because this is a... This is a, um... This is a new game. This is a uh, remake. Oh. 
so they remade the story, but Lucia always dies in Contra. Oh, that's the other girl. The girl with blue hair. She always dies in Contra, and then what happens is her father clones her, and we have Lucia Zero. But this character I'm playing is... I think the character you're playing as is, is, is... This is her first appearance in the series, but I could be wrong. Is she like Ariana? Or, oh, no, Brianna. Wait, Ariana. That's what her name is, Ariana. In the original canon OH, she dies. And then her father, who's a genetic scientist, makes a clone of her known as Zero. And then you play as Zero for most of like the other Contra games. So, I mean, you know, the likelihood if they're following the story... Um, you know, that's exactly what's going to happen. Here's this Presbyterian uh, Nintendo Lover Girl. That's awesome. I've been, I've been, my my family went to Presbyterian Church for a while, actually. But kids today, they can't play and beat as many games as we could in the 90s because their games today are longer. Much longer. Yeah, it's like older games are like shorter and more intense. Right, but that's how they made them, though. They made the games really hard and short back in the 90s and the 80s. And yeah. Oh, here we go again. That's what I'm used to. That's why I don't like games that take a long time. There it is, people. Second jam up on a Nintendo Switch stream, not even two hours into the stream, a full crash number two. Boo! I'm playing Disney Dreamlight Valley while listening. Hope you guys aren't scared of bugs. Luke? doesn't he doesn't mind bugs aliens is fine he doesn't he just doesn't like spiders i don't like spiders okay it's getting that time of year i was annoyed because we played that one game where we were getting really far in and then they brought the spiders out and then we had to stop playing the game because luke was physically afraid of it i can't help that i have arachnophobia you could just get over it i can't get over it you could just go to, like, they have therapy. I did have therapy for they it. They have therapy like that where they, like, flash the spider in front of you and then they, like, sing pretty music while it's happening or something. No, that doesn't they can, work. Like, they can, like, hypnotize you. I went into shock. Mm -hmm. I had a tarantula, a very hairy, big tarantula, thrown on my bare chest in college. And then I freaked out and I was on the top bunk and I smushed the tarantula on the ceiling. And got bit and went into shock. And then I had to go to the hospital in college. I will never get over spiders. Because literally I am terrified of them because of that incident. Most people would not get over something like that. I know. I'm just being a jerk. I literally have trauma from it. I'm sorry. It was not a funny college prank. Like, I know that. And the dude who did it didn't even feel bad. He was upset that I killed his pet. Right. He was a jerk. Right. But that's why I have arachnophobia. Alright, I guess I'll try a character I haven't tried then. I'll try this, uh, Lusa. Is Luca. it Lucia or Lusa? Well, I don't know. Lucia. Spider-Man is a fictional character who's all red. There are no red spiders. I know of. I could be Spider-Man? No, it wasn't. No. Wasn't wasn't a funny day for me, guys. It was <laughs> it was terrifying. I know someone who is actually terrified of butterflies, says Dippo96. Um they should watch that um there's a video on YouTube called Butterfly Man. You're acting as if the, the switch was the Wii U. Spider Luke, Spider Luke. No, it's not funny, Max. That's that's a, one of the like I I think that my spider trauma is worse than my clown trauma. I think. I don't believe in trauma. I don't. I mean, I believe in it, but it's like, I just. I don't know. What are they playing with? That's what you're doing. Let's get this done. Look. Okay, so this is a level that's never been in Contra. This is um they they went all like. Well, we have to explain where the aliens came from. So there was an ancient protector race that is secretly on Earth, and they're in the pyramids or whatever. And that's what this is. Oh, the aliens. One sec. What happened? What's going on? Get away from my boat! No! Thank you.
Well, I mean, I was up all morning doing stuff. I don't know what you want me to do, Luke. How did you hear me? Oh my gosh. So it's just like Stargate then with the aliens. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's like Stargate. Yes. Totally. Correct. It is like Stargate. Mm -hmm. Now you can't go through those little bags anymore. Ooh. You can tell people to watch the short real quick. Right? Oh, Luke says I can tell seconds. people to watch the short real quick. Watch the short real quick, everyone. I don't know. I don't really know how to... You guys are doing great with the short. Like, so... 500 people have watched it. <sighs> it's fantastic. <sighs> Absolutely fantastic. Okay, that's a little behind. All right. But, Luke. Yes. Your, your view dip is always at the same time at night, so there's no reason to be like... <laughs> Oh my gosh, why are the views dipping? It's like it always happens at that time at night. I just stabilized them. I know, but I'm just saying. And it's, it's not just that. Like, with all the hacking shenanigans, like, we've dropped, like, 10, 15,000 views a day. All right, I'm sorry. So, I mean, I've only basically put in, like, today, maybe 5,000 views plus the 500 right. extra on the... I, no, I didn't want you to complain. I'm not complaining for these numbers. I don't want to talk about it. I'm back, baby. Oh, I don't know. So, um, yes, you were saying before this is supposed to be like Stargate. Even your costume, your character, kind of looks like not a character. Because that's not the costume that she had in the previous game. No. So, you know how the guys walk around shirtless? Um, your character used to wear, like, basically, like, a one-piece blue, like, uh, bodysuit. Like a, like, blue bathing suit with... Um, boots and really like operatic gloves and a bulletproof vest. The fact that you remember these characters, um, like their outfits and details is astounding. Well, I mean, the guys are always shirtless, and the girls usually would either wear, like, in the 90s, uh, most girl heroine characters would wear, like, a um, one piece bathing suit style or whatever that would be called. Cami style suit. Cami style suit with like either a um, leather jacket, like a, a military jacket with like the sleeves cut off, bandana like tied around their head like Ryu, and um, they would have like thigh high boots or small like combat boots. So basically, yeah, like Cami style. That was like the what most uh, female uniforms like incorporated into the uniforms back during that time. Very few female characters would be given um, like. Uh, two pieces unless it was Mortal Kombat. Even Street Fighter, most of the women just had like a one-piece bathing suit style. Or a bodysuit, I guess. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's like a bodysuit. That's exactly what it's called. Oh, that's it. It's oh, called okay. that online, actually. If you order something like that online, it's called a bodysuit. And the reason why is because girls have more to cover up than guys do. That's why yeah, guys girls... run around with a, you know, no shirt. Women have more to cover up, so that's why they have different bathing suits or body suits. Yes, I know. But in the 2020s, they try to make everybody exactly the same. Um, so, yeah. It's it's weird. Um, I I know. Ooh, 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 ooh. No, 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 no. Mine, mine. Oh, thank you. And I died. Well, I mean, you died in the Stargate level. So as long as I make it to the boss, then. What I'm noticing about arcade mode is they actually let you continue. Um, it's very different than the classic arcade mode. That once you die, you get a certain number of lives and you come back. So that's what's different about this Contra game. Is this Contra, um, it has unlimited continues. Whereas Contra games in the past did not have unlimited continues. You would get like four lives maybe. Or like maybe two continues. And then you'd have to get good. No. Ooh. It makes sense why they always add, like, aliens into the pyramids, because the ancient Egyptians always talked about, you know, going towards the stars and stuff like that. We don't even know where this weird thing takes place, or even if it is a pyramid. Like, 
it might all this entire game i believe takes place on an island oh wow right i think uh, well, I'm sorry. No, fine. it's nope. I mean, yeah, this doesn't is... look like it's from Earth. Look at these huge crystals. This is an Earth. This this is Earth. This is where the Guardian lives. Basically, think of him like Conan the Barbarian. You'll see if I make it to him. Like this is a very hard level. Like it took all my lives last time to get through here. So it took me. Um, I forgot how many times I died. Whoops. That was me. But they're very creative with their level design. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, the crystal thing is cool. Especially right there, you're actually looking through the crystal. Not when you go upside down, it's not cool. There's a section where the crystal goes upside down. I like these crystal levels, because I like to imagine taking one of these crystals home and selling it. Mm. They'd be worth so much money. Probably. But you can't actually do that, because how would you lift it? So like interesting like finding a treasure like that but you couldn't actually take it with you. Yeah. Like, yeah. like Contra games are very hard to begin with but what I like about this what they've done is like with the you know the cool perk system that they have. Yeah. It, letting you keep your guns and stuff like that. It takes the sting out of it a little bit because the game's already hard. Mm -hmm. But it's not like journalist easy. Yeah. You know? It's hard. But it's it's still possible to beat it, but it's not like super possible to beat it. Like if you if you struggle and you will struggle, mm -hmm. you can still try it. That's contra. The crystal thing is very cool. I like how it's like showing you in one spot, but then another spot when you're ah! it's when you're next to the crystal, it's enlarging you and showing you in a different area. Like you're seeing yourself slightly above where you are. <laughs> yeah. You can call this oh no, Stargate. we got another game. Oh, you're gonna get a game over this contra. But, I mean, I think that this is a perfect modern Contra game because, like, it incorporates elements of Contra, but it also takes away some of the frustration that Contra had, like, you know, um, continues, like, limited continues, and, um, you know, how many lives they give you. Uh, the perk system is kind of cool because you get to choose what type of guns you bring into the game, as well as you have an option of using a modifier that allows you to keep your weapon because, you know, playing through the game with your basic gun is very, very hard. Oh no, I'm so sorry that happened to you, Irene. <laughs> Irene says, so sorry to what happened to Luke. Hmm? Sorry what happened to you, Luke. She said when I was in college. Six, um Um my cousin thought it was funny to lock me in the dark and laugh at me. I was terrified and I was six years old. To this day I'm still afraid of dark spaces. Yeah, I mean, it can definitely traumatize you. Yeah, I freeze up when it comes to spiders. Especially big spiders. Smaller spiders, I've gotten good at using the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, I, can I have a similar problem with the dark because when I was younger, I actually... Whoops. I, I didn't have a nightlight when I was younger, so... I mean, it's not as terrifying as I, what happened to Irene. But I just... Go, 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 go. You know, I always had... I was always like, yeah. So I always sleep with the light on now. It's fine. There's no problem with that. You had the option of having like a little, like. So we got light. like a small, like tiny lamp that's like, just like USB plugged into the wall, and Luke lets. It's not too bright. Luke lets me put that on, but he doesn't like the light on. So like when he, uh, comes upstairs and he's there and. I'm not alone in the dark, then he, like, then I'll turn it off if he's up there. But if I'm there alone, I'll keep it on. Remember, you gotta keep moving because these death traps will kill you. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the, the worst thing that you can do in a uh, Contra game is stay stationary because the obstacles will kill you. Also, okay. enemies respawn constantly. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. And you're doing great. You're doing a lot better than yesterday. Well, I was asleep yesterday. I, we're actually almost done with the game. We're on stage. Uh, I thought you finished it yesterday. Oh, I did. I'm, I'm just having fun playing it. Like um, I, we we're almost done with the game. Okay. Yeah. And you've showed all the characters. Well, I've gotten to play this really cool guy. Whoa! What did I do? I was like showcasing all the characters. Woohoo! This is awesome. 
I don't even know what that kind of gun is. This is very artistic. This is super artistic. Way Forward always like does a great job. Well, Way Forward is a company that when they do remakes, they're basically bringing their childhood to life. Like they're, you know, they're people who basically are my age that grew up with the original Contra and stuff like that, and they're adding their own flavor to it while still, you know, doing justice to the original. Yeah. Which I wish a lot of game companies would would do that, would have the type of respect for the property. That's why WayForward is one of my favorite companies, is because they've been around for like almost 30 years, or 20 something years. 25 years, I think. You know? Every yeah, game that they've worked like on is, I want to say, kind of like a masterpiece, because yeah. they show a lot of respect to whatever property they work on. Like, I remember the one I like is The Boy and His Blob. The Boy and His Blob remake they did, yep. That was on um, either we or we use. If we had more companies that were like way forward's mindset with stuff, we'd have amazing video games today. There wouldn't be bad video games. Not everyone can be way forward. Though. No, not everyone can be way forward because a lot of them are lazy. Just not. Um, sad, but I'm just no, no, sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay, I mean, I can get through, but... This... I don't know what you want. Alright, here we go. It's uh, Conan the Barbarian. Sorry. This is gonna be tough. <laughs> we might take all of it. That can't be good. Oh my gosh, every time I take a weapon that you wanted, you always do this. You always say, oh my gosh, this is gonna be tough because you took the good weapon in. No, it's as like... long as you use the missile, we're fine. <sighs> the missile's his weakness. You know what? You can just have my character. You can switch to my character. I, I, can't I just died. Wow. This dude is like Conan the Barbarian on steroids. Like he, I, I wish he was an unlockable character. He's not though. But he reminds me of like fighting He-Man or something. He's just nuts. Your mom was driving down the highway and a mouse appeared on the hood of her car. Oh my gosh, Bowman. That's crazy. Or not Bowman, I'm sorry, Debo96. Sorry about that. I actually was driving one time and a bird appeared on my windshield. That was different. I thought it was a giant bug at first, but it, it definitely wasn't it was a bird. Guys, have we figured out where this dude, this Conan the Barbarian ripoff is from? Like, what Konami game is he from? Or is he not? I'm sorry, I took the missile. Ba -ba. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I just looked in the mirror when I was upstairs and I have huge gashes all over my arms. And I can only think of one person that's the culprit. Are you pointing at me? No, Link. Oh yeah, Link did it. Look at these huge gashes, Luke, on my elbows and that stuff. Look at this. Look, look. Like, oh my, my gosh. All bloody. Yeah, yeah. I have blood all over my arms. Checkpoint! It literally looks like I'm being attacked by a rabid raccoon every day. Oh, I'm being attacked by a rabid Kind of reminds me of Indiana Jones music a little bit. Stargate. Stargate had a TV show, too, in the 90s. So not only they have a movie, but they also had a TV show. And I think Kevin Sorbo was in it. Stargate is very cool. They haven't done much with Stargate. The whole... Shit, was... Did he play... Am I getting his... Well, like, they had a huge... They had a really important movie. Hey, guys. Um, do remember. you... Do you remember if there was a Kevin Sorbo Stargate show, or is it another 90s actor? It was, I thought there was a very famous, like, action star that ended up, um... Who would buy an old robo? ...doing the Stargate thing. Creepy Terminator skull. Oh, I well, that was crazy. That's your character's voice? Yeah, my, my dude is like, he's like Mr. T. And he said, I ain't playing. Right. <laughs> he's Mr. T. He has lots of personality. Mr. T. So this is a new character for the game, and then the original, the other girl I played as, Ariana, is a new character. Ariana and Stanley are new. Oh. Um, 
Lucia, Bill, and Bill, Lucia, Lent, Lent, whatever his name is. They're, they're, they're the um, country games. Looks like you have little butterfly wings. Oh, You're fighting the Terminator. Come yeah. with me if you want to. I'm probably gonna die. You might have to fight with me. I'll be back. Ah! Hey, Link. Link, I have red gashes all over my arms. Can you explain? Link, that? Link hurt Amber, <laughs> and he's not even sorry. Nope. Nope. I looked in the mirror today when I was brushing my teeth and stuff, washing my hands, and he was like, "I looked at him like, why do I have red gashes all over my arms?" Oh. No. Like, oh, I have red gashes on my arms because my cap is ripping them off. Okay, we're gonna fight the Terminator. Look, you should just be me. Why? I like my guy. But you need the homing device. No, I'm fine. We're gonna pick up weapons on the way to fight him. There's a big boss. They're gonna do weapon drop. Mm. I just have to. I have to pay attention to the weapon drop. I don't like the laser with uh, Stanley. Stanley getting out. Pew 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 pew. Gonna be a lot of laser guns this week because tomorrow is Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Oh no. What's the matter? I have the crappy laser gun, that's what I'm saying. What right. the hell? Yeah, you're in trouble. Right, uh, aim for his head. Uh, try to avoid his weird laser guns. Eventually he will drop other weapons, though. But we just have to keep hitting him. Oh. Oh wow, yeah, your missiles are like overloaded. Yeah, your <laughs> face. So of course, Way Forward has uh, made bosses based on 80s and 90s pop culture, and they even said so. In the so if they're like, if you have a sense of deja vu and you're over the age of like 35, he says yes. <laughs> that you are experiencing something from your childhood. A monster or something may may or may not be based on some famous movie or like 90 TV show. Huh. We were allowed to take free liberties. Oh wow, that's funny. Yep, so they took like some because that robot was in the original Contra, one of them. Mm, so they just turned wow. him into basically their version of the Terminator. Giant Terminator. Why is the game not ending? Oh, oh wait, because I need to leave. I was on the side of the wall. Uh. Okay, good. We both have to be on the ground, I think. I'll be big. <laughs> okay, so now we're going inside the alien. I think. I don't actually know any Terminator lines. We're going, and now it's Super C is the next level. <laughs> da -da 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 Super C. Aliens. Bick, I am Bick, I am Bick. Oh no. yeah, you should watch Jackson Galaxy. My 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 cat from Heck Show. Yeah, we've seen that. I remember. We've seen it. Maybe we should ask uh, him to come to our house. Be kind of cool. Please don't jam. Yeah, stage seven. We're almost done. She probably Resuming our advance. A cat therapist or something. Okay, so um, just full disclosure, this level is insane. Um, this is a level where you want to run and gun because you cannot stop the aliens from coming. They come from both directions. There are two bosses in this level too. Just keep running, try to get to the checkpoint, because this is about to go into I was stuck in this level for almost two hours, actually. Until I learned, run! Fly, you fool. Fly, you fool, exactly. Actually, that's a great idea! Woohoo, I'm flying! Oh, man. Lame thrower. Yeah, see how they're constantly spawning? There's no way to stop them. They just keep coming. There's 
just keeps going and going. Yep. And we're not even to the checkpoint yet. The checkpoint is way up. Wow. Yes, you got the good one. All right, let's move. Wow. Missed me? No, they didn't. Nope, my better laser still sucks. There is no better laser. There's crappy laser and worse laser. Is that it? Is that all you got? No, that's all you got. All you got, man. I don't know. If we can, if we can get to the first boss, then we don't have to do the beginning of this section again. Yeah, this is Super C right now. This is totally Super C, which is Contra 2. Ooh, I got an extra guy. Good. No, I don't want that. Well, actually, yes, I do. This, um, yeah, I want that. All right, let's move. There's gonna be a boss dragon coming up soon. I took. No, right uh, it's okay. I'm not angry. I'm just. I said I was shocked because I lost something. Actually, I, I can get rid of this weapon. All right here we go, dragon. Right. I said no because I lost my power. Watch out. Okay, missile that fool. You got the good one. Um, he has two main attacks. He charges at you like from the top. He's coming on the bottom. Overload my. If we if we kill him, we get the checkpoint. If not, we have to start the whole hive level again. What's up? You almost got him, Amber. Keep it up. He's dead. Good job. Checkpoint achieved. Yeah, he is an anticlimactic death. He just turns into a jelly bean. I don't know why. Will there be another stream of this? This is this is the last stream. We're not doing another one of these. We don't need to. You guys got to see all the characters. You got to see arcade mode. I mean, there's really not much for this game. This is basically like a, a second playthrough with a second person. So I mean, this, we're, we're almost done with the game. There's one more level after this, and then it's over. It's not a very long game. It's just it feels long because of how much you die. In it. That's what makes it feel long. You died, honey. Stop pressing the buttons. We don't want to jam up the system. I'm gonna die now. Oh, you can. We're almost done. If you tell yourself you can't, you can't. I have to tell yourself I can. You've almost beaten Tom for him. No, but I'll care. And then you could say, I beat Contra. Do you know how hard it is to beat it with two players? No. There's literally one stage left. And it's a boss battle. We're almost there. I am going to help you find your glasses tonight, as well as I'm doing the dishes. I'm going to eat my dinner. That's what most people do. And then I'm going to record a new Spider-Man video because people got a thousand views. So there's one more checkpoint in this game, but we have to book it, like, to get to it. Oh, crap. Yeah, you're supposed to walk on the ceiling. I have a jetpack, so... I cheated. Yeah. Now I can help too. Ha ha ha! Missile, 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 missile. The problem is the missiles aren't very strong, but they cover up a lot of ground. So, um, there's gonna be a part in this that's coming up where the floor is literally gonna turn into stomach acid. Well, I mean, you're inside of an alien's stomach, so. 
don't know why it was phasing through the platform, but it is what it is. Platform phase activity. Formal. Platform phase. Ah, see how there's constant aliens going, so you wanna you wanna keep moving. Otherwise you're gonna become alien food. This is not a checkpoint, this was a movie. Oh wait, yes, this is a checkpoint. This is the end of uh we beat this guy, this is the end of um level seven. And there's one more alien level. Yep, his weakness is missiles. You did? You have spreader. Darn it. I'm back, baby! I'm a back, baby! How do you like me now? So two players make it easier to kill monsters. I'm sliding down Why is he going from his tail? He likes going from his tail. Dude's not dead yet? Come on. You some pretty cool power-ups with your gun. Ow. No, I don't have a good power-up. I have one that looks cool. No, she has different power-ups. Oh, oh. Her gun looks different than most people's. Like, oh. the probotec probe protectors and Lance and Bill, they have the same moves. The other characters have different moves. You're, you're dead. Alright, final stage. Yep. This is 2-11-55. Final stage. Amber's gonna try to join me in the final stage. She might have to hit the drop out button. We'll see. I get to show her how bad this final level is, though. I'm not gonna last long. I'll try to get to the checkpoint, but I don't think I can do it because, like, I only have two lives maybe I take oh the spaceship is first never mind this is a boss against the alien and then the final stage so this is the final this is the alien boss I don't know if you have a boss. Shredder. Cool keys. I'm gonna die here anyway. This dude is nuts. He's basically... No, he's like the... He's supposed to be the Predator. It's a reference. He looks like the Predator, but he's... No, I mean, this is a way forward original idea. I don't remember this guy being in console before. Oh, I know what they're using. Yeah, they're doing... He looks like Predator. You're fine. Ah. Holy crap! Wow. Dude's angry. I died. I tried. Da -da 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 bump 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 bump. This is stage. This is stage eight. 
Frigid. Whoop. I know we do. Okay, guys, the short is at 600 views. Let's uh, push the short a little bit more. You guys could just take a second and hit that button. That'd be fantastic. Thank you very much. Shorter's doing much better than it did yesterday. I had to change the short name like four or five times yesterday. I, I don't know where the sugar is, honey. Ride bad, guys. Missiles is his weakness. The only thing you have to worry about is when he's spinning his uh, spear around, don't shoot him. If you shoot him when he's spinning his spear, he has a move that can attack the entire screen. So when he's spinning his spear, do not hit him. That is my best information that I can give. That is what you're faking me to do. Do not hit him again. Okay, see how he's spinning it? Do you think the Konami code works in those games like that? Um... For 49 months, Chad, you're breathtaking! How annoying. Great. No, I didn't mean to get your power-up. I mean, you the wrong power-up. The Predator Man, stop. See, I mean. Yeah, that's the move. It's not as hard as the final boss. Nope. He's the dude who calls in the alien invasion. Now the hard level. Thank you, Chad. You're breathtaking. Thank you so much. I don't know if Luke's tried the Konami code. I have not. He said he has not tried it. Did we hit something? Um. That's the funny one. What? Yep. Godzilla Predator? Godzilla. Kind of. So. My best advice for the final level is run. Run. This is the level where they do not stop uh, spawning. Isn't that the advice you're giving me for every level up until now? This is worse. You'll see. It would be awesome if uh, WayForward did something with the Konami code, says Chad. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome, Chad. Just another detour. Yeah, this 
Oh great, that's a terrible gun now. It's fine. It's not timed, but it is kind of timed. See that? It's not timed, but it's you're... Oh, you're dead. <laughs> See that what? See that green stuff? That's gonna rise. Guy, no. Well, so much for an extra guy. Uh, latch on to you, and then throw stuff rises. Crap. Forty-nine months. Chad's been one of our longest members. Forty-nine months, Chad. Four years and one month as a member? Unbelievable. I didn't even know anyone's been a member for four years. Amber, there's coming out an interesting game in May. It's called My Little Pony Busy Infinite. Well, I don't know if we could cover it here because we would probably get screwed by Kappa. If we covered that. According to Kappa, anything that's made for girls is automatically outlawed by them. Considering the girls and babies are the same people, according to Kappa. Hmm. Any person audience is made for little kids, according to Kappa. Which is weird. Cool. This is the only section where you can kind of pace yourself. Well, the blade is going pretty close to you. Well, you have to go. Yep. Oh. This is the only section where you can face it. And then it's going to get crazy. No, I don't want that. Nope, I don't want that either. I'm hoping I kill enough of these I get an extra guy, because uh, I might be able to make it to the checkpoint. If we make it to the checkpoint, then it's a straight shot to the final boss. Alright, Chad, it says, Google says if you input the Konami code in this game, you get 30 lives. Wow. That's awesome, Chad. Oh, no. This is gonna be hard. Somebody's stabbing knives through here? This is fun. Yeah, retro games is like if you're you're not really gaming unless you're biting your nails and reading at the game. Mm -hmm. Well, well, that's a power up. Okay. That's a lame power up. Oh, lame. Oh, oh my gosh, it's rising! Yep. And there are enemies coming after you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I think you have to, yeah. Disturbing, the blades look like they have blood on them. Or they rough. do. Gross. That's pretty gross. No! Now I have to do it all over again. No! Oh my gosh. I was hoping I was gonna make it. Konami go time! Nope. Alright, run! Run, run, run! There's too many of them. I can't hold on much longer. Yep. Mr. Spot, hold on as long as you can. Oh, it's bad. Oops, 
Yes, you did. At least they were full yell when it died. Remember, you don't want to be sitting still. I thought that was a knife blade. I can't walk on that. You just have to jump over it as best you can. If you sit still, you're going to get overwhelmed by enemies. I was stuck on the bubble for two hours. I know what I'm talking about. You got to run and gun. Regardless if you die, you got to keep pushing forward. It's a very, very hard moment. Because now you have that thing that's constantly rising, so you got to got to keep going up. When you get hit, you have a brief bit of invincibility. Not very long, but it's, you know, brief. No, they didn't miss you. They killed you, dude. Forward, move forward. Okay. I've returned to the front. The um, goo isn't going to raise anymore, so now you can kind of like take your time killing enemies until you get to the next like uh, section. I would recommend trying to kill as many of these things as possible so you might get an extra guy. Okay. Also, you probably won't get overwhelmed by all the alien hatching because they're literally everywhere. Um, from the stuff in the ceiling, you want to duck when they come down. Duck. Run. Duck. Run. Duck. Run. Duck. Run. Oh. Are you dead? No, you're still alive. This one. I don't way. think so. Okay. Oh, no. I can't even get up. Okay, you're dead. <laughs> I might be able to make it to the checkpoint with four lives. I'm gonna try. Ah! Mean! Mean! Oh my god. Alright, now I got five lives, but not really because I did Last time I had one life here, I should be able to do this. This makes me wanna watch the OG. Oh jeez. I I don't remember. And we might have we streamed the Contra collection. I didn't get very far. I don't know. I guess we were Yeah, you played in the Contra collection. You've played in most of the games we cover on this channel. Shoot. Me. Alright, this is a nasty part. Climb, 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 shoot! Climb, climb, climb! Shoot! Climb! Shoot! Oh my gosh, watch out. Yeah, they're nasty, didn't they? Ah! Doesn't matter if you get stabbed, keep going! Just keep going! It's rising! No! No! Ah! My life! No, don't put him there! He has a terrible jump! Stanley has the worst jump in the game! That's why they gave him a jetpack! I did this with, I think, uh, Lance. No! Run, Stanley, run! Now, I need to remember to go right. Don't go left. If you go right, you're dead. Gotta go. Shoot. I'm almost to the checkpoint. That's what's so irritating. I'm almost there! Ah! Stanley, run! He's almost there, game. Run! Checkpoint! Just make it over! Yes! Once you get past this section, there! Checkpoint! So when you- when I die, we go here, Amber, and then the final boss is not far from here. Awesome. Yep. 
That took me two hours to do last night. Just to get past that section took me two hours. Now I know how to do it, but still, it was insane. I do not recommend. I do not recommend. But running and gunning is the key. No! Out of my way, dragon. Clear! Blah, blah, blah. Now you get to see the final boss. Awesome. There he is. Weird flower? Oh, that's crazy. Nice. Gaiaka, Gaiaka. You saved me to trip. Final boss. Shoot him in the eye. That's how you beat him. So we're just going to sit here when you come in and shoot him in the eye, and we'll do him real fast. I recommend both having missiles, and we'll take this guy out real quick. Ah! Aha! Look at that. I have an eye for trouble. Now the other eye. Wait, what eye did I hurt before? It's important to... The eye that you damage is the one that... Ow! You want to hit. Okay, Amber, here we go. Final boss. Let's go. Alright, final boss time! Nope, we can't change our characters. It's arcade mode. We're locked in. Locked and loaded. Here we go, Amber. Amby. Mm -hmm. Do you need to take a swig of coffee? Oh, I didn't realize we had started. Yeah, Sorry. we started. Watch out for the enemies behind you because you want to have at least like three lives to fight the final boss. Okay. Mm -hmm. Keep going, keep going. You don't want to stop. Don't stop, you'll get eaten by all the aliens. You stop, you stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going. They have infinite respawn. Think of it like Ninja Gaiden on the NES, where they don't stop. The only way you stop is by moving the screen forward. Okay? All right, keep going. You gotta, honey, you gotta come toward me. Oh, sorry. I know you're falling asleep, but do your best. Okay. Shoot. Give me that okay, what guns did they give me? No. Not bad stuff. Alright, you have good stuff. Feeling about this one. Um, okay. yeah. No, just keep holding in the button and shoot. Sorry. That's what you're gonna do with your five lives. Just hold in and shoot. Okay. Okay, I cannot do this without you. I'm trying. Two player difficulties mm -hmm. insane. Something important. Up and shoot. Shoot the eye. One, two, yeah. fire! You don't need to walk or anything, just you die, you respawn. Just keep shooting. There you go. Next phase. Same thing, we're going for this eye because this is the one that we damaged. Let him rip! Don't worry if you get hit. It's not about not getting hit, it's about shooting. There you go, next die. Oh wait, actually. Uh Ooh, that didn't sound good. Okay, this die. Guys have it. There's one eye down. Switch to the other one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lovely. Well, she dies anyway in the cannon, so I mean... Man, I have a lot to go. Alright, aim for the brain! Get mother brain! You got missiles, let him have it! Just shoot! We're almost there! Come on, let's go! Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep it up, keep it up. Almost there. You beat Contra. What? That's, That's it. it. You beat Contra. Yay. Brace it for impact. Aim for the helicopter so you don't die. Stay in the middle of the screen. Y'all do know how There to you party. go. Good job, Amber. Awesome. Good job, Luke, and good job, everyone watching.
Night. There it is, people. So that's arcade mode. We played with all the characters. That's it. And that's Contra. That is Contra. Contrary to what I thought it was, that's it. That is Contra. Contrary to what Amber... Yep, that is Contra. Okay. So, let's see. What's going on tomorrow? So, tomorrow is... Um, hmm... I'm probably gonna stream something else, guys. I think I'm gonna do like a uh, Nintendo Switch Online thing. Chaz says, "Very proud of you too. Great job." Says Tim Muller, "So proud of you guys." Let's get the let's play is complete. Says Smog M. That's right. Nice job, Luke and Amber. Says Jacob, and good game. Says Nathan. Woo. Says Lisa. Thanks, guys. So it looks like Final Fantasy is happening tomorrow. It's got 960 views after 12 in the morning. So... I don't know if it's going to be 4.30. There's a Star Wars game that's coming out that's going to be at 4.30. Um, what do I want to do? What do I want to stream? Hmm. I have to think about that. So, yep, we beat Contra together. Uh, arcade mode, full game. Arcade gameplay, full game. Bam! All the way through. Unfortunately, they don't have a story to it, though. There you go, Ambert. You can say you beat uh, Contra. That is street cred. Let's play complete. Yep. So, uh, I beat the game solo, and there was a lot of jump cuts. <laughs> a lot of parts of that stream that I cut out because I was eating food and all kinds of stuff. This was, like, literally a straight shot, pretty much. It's not bad. So, two hours and 30 minutes in order to complete Contra with two players. On normal. Yeah. And we played as Stanley, and we showed all the characters and stuff like that. Technically, it didn't, it, like, we kind of messed up and uh, had to start over again. So, the two-player doesn't really begin until the 17-minute mark. So, from the 17-minute mark to the two-hour and 35-minute mark. Hmm. All right. I'm trying to think what I want to stream now. Well, of course, you don't have to stream, honey. I'm, I'm going to stream something. I'm just trying to figure out what I want to stream. I could mess around with Star Wars Dark, Dark Forces again. I think I'll do that. Well, I mean, I know how to do it now, but I mean, there will be a lot of death involved. People don't care about that. You guys want to watch some Dark Forces? A little bit? Da-da-da, uh. da da Cool. Disney Dream No, our YouTube channel bugging out. I'm just messing up. No, I'm, I'm not stuck in Star Wars Dark Forces. I know what to do. I just don't want to do it. I know how to do it. I'm saying if you guys want to watch it, I can easily get that set up like in the next like two minutes. I could do stream number th uh, three of it. I'm just going to put Amber on the cover. To swap out. Yeah, I have I have Star Wars or art. And there's a Star Wars game coming out in the morning, so I'm just gonna take K Wing here and go I'm gonna take Amber's Princess Leia art that we have. There we go. So there it was. Overall time for us to complete. Um Contra with two players, it's right there. One hour and forty five minutes with perks. Um I only overloaded ten times. Deaths hundred and seventy five 
Amber's deaths, 154. Um, not bad. I don't think we get anything else for doing that. So, if you guys are just joining, the Konami code will give you 136 lives. Or, it will give you 36 lives if you do the, the code. Challenge mode. So here, they have speedrunner stuff, pacifism. Shows you all the stuff. Yeah, I, I had 156, I had 150 something deaths. I had a lot of deaths. I died a lot. <laughs> My deaths were many. I had fun, though. Like, this game was a lot of fun. Um, so I'm just setting up Dark Forces. I just need, like, two minutes. So you guys will just have this here. Real quick. Um, I have to go to our Star Wars character art. I know how to beat the level I'm stuck in. I just... You know. Yeah, Amber beat Contra, so she gets the thumbnail. Um... Princess Leia Amber. There we go. Well, I like putting Star Wars characters on here, so... Dark Forces Remastered. We're gonna change the side that she's holding the blaster on. Bloop. Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna just lower that, put her here. Dark forces. Um, that works. So I'm gonna boot up uh, Star Wars Dark Forces. Uh, we'll be replaying Stage Six again, which a lot of people don't like Stage Six, to be honest. <clears throat> I had a lot of fun playing with you, Amber. You did a great job. You can uh, put that under your belt. Put it, yeah, put it on her game resume. Alright, so we're gonna call this, uh, three. Now I'm gonna grab something to drink, guys, and we're just gonna move over to the next stream, like, real fast. So, I'm giving you guys the link now. It has Princess Leia on the thumbnail. Like this. Boom. Princess Amber. And then I'm just going to have to get something to drink. Setting it up for... Uh, let's do 115, because we have to do it in increments. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, because I'm too hyper to stop streaming. Like, I need to stream again to kind of bring up the numbers. Like, yesterday, our channel ended under 24,000 views for the day. And that's with us live streaming, so that was bad. It's not good. Why are you not redirecting to Star Wars? What happened? What happened? Weird. Oh, I see what's going on. I see what's going on. Change that to Tifa. Go back to Star this thing. 80 people watching, that's dope. So yeah, let me know if you guys are gonna pick up this uh, Contra game. It's pretty cool. Okay, so you guys will be redirected. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in 10 minutes. God bless. Happy gaming. Thanks so much for watching. Contra is done. We are done with our Contra series. It is all over. Showed the characters. Did the gameplay. Full game. Boom. See you guys on Star Wars. God bless. Happy gaming.